aims to get to that triple figure. Looking to be the second centurion for the Barbies four day team. Demraro had two half centuries when they batted in their first innings. Imlak and look not. And already with a century for Barbies. And a half century now. Maybe he could be dealing in hundreds for Barbies. Barnwell. Sinclair gets the first run of day number three. An easy single to mid wicket. He goes on to 85. Sinclair so far, 118 deliveries. Nine fours and four sixes. Very good knock from the young man. Yeah, and just as you were mentioning, John, uh, there's been a, a lot of starts from the Demerara team. Uh, like Skipper Leon Johnson, Christopher Barnwell, as you mentioned, Tevin Imlach, but no one really kicked on to get to that triple figure. Of course, Tevin Imlach was leading the way, but, you know, the, the Barbicians really root down, really put a high value on their wickets. Runs for Niall Smith as well. He opens his account on day number three. Drives the one down to deep cover. Two to him. So runs added now for Barbies can, can be considered bonus because they already have that lead of 30 overnight and extending that by three so far. So with the low order, really putting on a lot of runs, it all be added as bonus runs, very important runs. Nice inward movement from Barnwell. But what we notice as well is that Junior Sinclair is trusting his partner, Niall Smith, exposing him very early in the over. I rather suspect that with the confidence placed in him, you know, they're looking to have a good partnership going, starting fresh this morning. Want to continue in that vein, the partnership already on to 36. And there you see. Uh, Smith handling himself nicely, getting another single. You know, the, the entire batting lineup for the Barbies team has been impressive, or I should say most of the batsmen. It's actually been quite a while since I would have seen Niall Smith with the bat. I mean, we just focus on his bowling so much, and from the last time I've seen him to now, it looks like he's been doing a lot of work in the nets. Been uh, really putting in that effort because his batting looks way improved than uh, from previous years. Well, it's good to have a bowler who can really handle himself with the bat because remember, lots of times teams will need to hang on for a draw or the last, maybe last two wickets will need to get maybe 50 runs to win and lots will be dependent on those lower order batters. So it's good to see cricketers taking it upon themselves to improve other assets of their game to become multi-dimensional, not just a bowler or not just a batsman. So adding that value and that variety to their game, making them even more lucrative on the market. Over comes to an end, the first from Barnwell, 316 for eight. Ashwin Ned will continue. It's a wonderful day here at the National Stadium in Providence. Remember, admission is free. The gates are open. Feel free to come down, watch some cricket if you can. It's Monday, a working day for most. And those who are able to, come in and watch some nice battling cricket here. Ned looking to dart that one in, but Smith is up to the task. Keeping it out. I remember a story with Niall Smith a few years ago. I was on field umpiring a game. Uh, he was batting up at Barbies, and there was an incident. And I think we could keep it told him, You're out. And Niall was just walking off. And we had to say, Niall, no, he's joking. Come back. Come back. You're not out. I think that goes to show that he really wasn't that much interested in batting at that time. And I think, you know, maybe he has developed an interest now. And from that interest, you know, you, you put a 
you work on your craft, you look to improve yourself. But it's really good to see Nile Smith looking better technique-wise with the bat. He did save a match for Guyana. Actually won a match for Guyana batting at number 11. Himself and Pierre Sammy Pomal were asked to get some runs. I think it was 20 odd runs against the Volcanoes in 2021, 22. Entering out of Tobago. And he managed to scrape home. So he is actually a good batsman defensively. Sometimes he can look a bit awkward playing, trying to play some shots. Another maiden completed from Ashpednet. He's now sent down some eight maidens to an on overs in all, but yet to pick up a wicket, the left arm spinner. Yeah, he probably just have that monkey on his back until he get that first, the first count. It's a very busy morning in Mikowania. Lots of traffic on the East Bank corridor right next to the National Stadium here. It's good to know as well that the Demerara Harbor Bridge, which links Region 3 and 4, is back to full operation as of 3 a.m. this morning. Bando starts in you over. Yes, Guyanese up and about their business. Very hard working people, very trying people. You know, Monday morning they're on the go. I don't even think there's such thing as a holiday anymore in Ghana, John Ramsey. I don't think we even take holidays anymore. I like to call it an observance rather than a holiday because it's usually very nibbling outside the off stump. And umpire Wazir Dan Raj from Esukibo says not out. Barnwell was not interested anyways. Just Imlak and the first feeler in Leon Johnson going up. Yeah, I usually call it an observance because you know that it's there. But back in the days, a holiday to be like a ghost town, Georgetown and its environs. But these days, you can hardly tell the difference. That's why I say it's just an observance now. Yes, that's Guyanese, probably the most hardworking people within the region. And I, I had this revelation a while ago. It was some holiday, and I was driving around expecting that same ghost tongue as you would have mentioned. It. And I've seen supermarkets open, mechanic shops, auto spare uh, stores. It's like these people don't need to take a break. Well, it's a working day in Guyana, so we wouldn't expect many persons at the National Stadium to watch this game. But we're live streaming, so persons will be following that live stream, regardless whether they're at work or not. That's how much Guyanese love their cricket as well. And you mentioned everyone just working hard in Guyana. Reminds me of Mashramani because Mashramani means a celebration of the hard work. And like we work very hard Monday to Friday or even Monday to Saturday. Friday evenings, Saturday evenings, you don't need to give a guy a second invitation to have a party. We do love our social events here. So Barnwell getting the ball to move a little bit. Good lateral movement. movement. Sinclair not looking the same like he did yesterday. Just a single to him so far. So two consecutive maidens now sent down. Barbies in their first innings, 316 for a loss of eight. Extending their lead to now 34. Nile Smith is looking very confident and competent on 18. Sinclair 85, like I said, adding one to his overnight 84. Very important that they're still at the crease for Burbies. Demarano persevering with this ball that's now 87 overs old. Looking to get this breakthrough. Shamar Joseph, the next batsman in for Burbis at number 11. Ned starts a new over. 
Yeah, well, an option available to uh, the skipper was to come out with the new cherry. Maybe give it to the likes of Christopher Barnwell to see if he can clean up the tail, but skipper persisting with his spinners. And Barnwell with the older ball. He was getting some movement yesterday early on with the new cherry, so maybe that's something Leon should be thinking about. Very slow ball there from Ned. Yeah, Barnwell with the old ball can get some reverse swing as well. One of the things at Providence, there's a little bit of breeze this morning. Little or no clouds hanging overhead. Lots of blue in the sky. Good delivery. Beats him outside the off stump as he was prodding, uh, prodding forward defensively. So well bold dash mid Ned. looking cut shot there for no run yeah tight ring of feeders on the offside backward point cover extra cover and mid off Smith will have to work very hard to, to get it through that gap or the gaps on the offside cannot do so defense again maiden over again completed so net has bowled three overs this morning all three maidens Burbies 316 for a loss of eight I don't know if you were looking last night, John, but Kane Williamson in the test match against England became the highest scoring in New Zealand test match batsman with 7,787 runs. Once again, Monroe troubling Junior Sinclair outside his off stump. Johnson may be tempted to bring in another field in the slip cordon, just one step in himself. No, it's not following that test match uh, as much as I would love to because remember the Demra Harbour Bridge was inoperable so I was displaced for a few days. <laughs> yeah, so Keen Williamson, congratulations to him. Yeah. One of the big four uh, in terms of world batters for a long time. Yes, Williamson is one of my favorite uh, players in the game. I, I just love the way he goes about his business. He's such a leader and you know, kudos to New Zealand cricket over the years. That leadership torch has just passed down uh, from generation to generation almost effortlessly. One of my favorite captains of all time since I've been watching cricket was Stephen Fleming. Right? Uh, Stephen Fleming now number three on that runs list. No run there with... Uh, Stephen Fleming, 7,172. Ross Taylor, 7,683. And at number four, ironically, it's Brendan McCollum, the coach of the English team, leading the English side against New Zealand with 6,453 runs. Beauty of a delivery from Barnwell. Sinclair has no answer so far for the questions that asked by Barnwell. I'm not sure what his partner, Nile Smith, will come down to tell him. But Nile Smith is not interested in going to that end either. Barnwell is in a good rhythm this morning. I don't think Nile Smith is worried that much. He seems to have his head on. Barnwell probing away, looking to get the breakthrough, looking to bridge the defense of Junior Sinclair. He's holding form so far, however. He's on 85. Yeah, I used to really enjoy New Zealand's cricket. And look at the grounds as well. Uh, the, climate, the climate in New Zealand is something that I rather suspect has the green looking that green. And the grass banks, usually lush. This time he gets him through the covers. We get a single, just protection. Richie looked not on the cover boundary. 
Sinclair is now on to 86. That's the end of the over as well. So breaking the sequence of maidens. So 317 now, Burbies, for a loss of eight. Yeah, New Zealand is, is a, a beautiful place indeed from what we've seen. Uh, I, I've always enjoyed New Zealand cricket, the Black Caps, especially the days of uh, Stephen Fleming. And so we had Jacob Oram, Nathan Astle, Chris Cairns. Chris Cairns, yes. Daniel Vittori, the doctor. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite players, Shane Bond. It's a shame that injury uh, hampered his career so much. I remember looking at the game in New Zealand and seeing the umpire, Murray Erasmus, side on standing at the stumps, and I couldn't figure out why. When I did find out, it was the wind. The wind was so much that instead of the normal umpiring stance, he chose to stand side on, which was very interesting to me. Ned to continue. The first run off Ned for the morning comes off the bat of Sinclair. I trust you with your umpire eyes to see that the umpire is not standing in the, what may be termed the approved manner. Yes, those were the days when I was on the field and cricket was basically my study. I never missed a cricket match. I had two or three screens open at once, John, looking at different matches. So West Indies will begin their test series against South Africa as well. And that is set to bowl off tomorrow morning. Four o'clock start local time. Be good to see West Indies really putting up a fight because they've done so against test oppositions of late. Despite going down to Australia, you can see there's a fighting spirit again. Edge found. And Al Smith will get some runs because the a boundary getting closer there now. Akshay Prasad just ambles behind it because he realized he was running away from him. Four runs, the first boundary of day number three. Smith moves up to 22 now. It's 3 22 for eight, and that lead now 40. And just a little at a little at a time, just wearing away at the Demerara bowling. Yeah, and, and I am looking forward to the test match as well. Got to go to bed early tonight to catch a bit before we schedule for duties here tomorrow. And you know something, John, when you think about it, when you look at the amount of test matches that West teams are scheduled to play for this year, it's kind of a disservice to the development of West Indies cricket. You know, when, in comparison to the n number of matches, as we say, the big three are scheduled to play this year. I think West Indies are only scheduled to play about seven tests or so this year, a very small number. I mean, it's very hard, and, you know, our test team has actually been our best team. But if you don't get that match practice, it's going to be very hard for our players to develop. Overcomes to an end. Score remains in 322 for the loss of eight. Sinclair, 87. Niall Smith, 22. And that is what I was saying all match, that continuity. You need to have players playing all the time to have that muscle memory ready for the next challenge in that form. Looking at the Demerara Harbour Bridge at this time. Quite an easy flow so far. Heading east and west. Our statistician Lake Ram came this morning from the west side and he said unusual build up of traffic. I told him that's Monday morning for you. <laughs> yes, West Indies are due to play two test matches against uh, South Africa, in South Africa. And after that, some of the players from the test side will be coming back to domestic cricket, including Tejan Ryan Chandapal and Gurukesh Moti. Short ball to Sinclair, Barnwell starts a new over. West Indies will play 3 1 day internationals and a similar number of T20 internationals. So white ball format as well. It's an all format series West Indies against South Africa. So while players 
from this in the county tournament. The first two rounds will be vying for places on the Harp Eagle side. Players in the domestic setup will be looking to maintain the... Oh, that's a drop. It was a short ball outside the off stump. The trap was set. Junior Sinclair cut and cut hard. Akshay saw at backward point, diving away to his left. Got both hands to it, and then it came out after he landed. Sinclair given a life on 87, moves up to 88, and it's now 322, uh, 323 for 8. Akshaya Pesad, you can't do that. That's a sin. Funny enough, he was caught in a similar position uh, when he was at uh, batting. Put that down. Barnwell would not be pleased with that. This time, short ball is pulled away, but there's a feeler right back on the boundary at fine leg in Sankar. So Barnwell now, obviously disappointed, bringing out a short ball to Niall Smith. Testing the pitch. So Sinclair given a life on 87. Just not look the same like he did yesterday, Junior Sinclair. Yeah, I don't think he has settled as well for the morning. I think if you can get get through this first hour I think he should be fine providing that he has uh, support at the other end of course eight wickets down single there moves on to eight and nine yeah, I was saying so players will be looking to get into the, the first class side and then those players in the first class tournament when it resumes on March 15 We'll be hoping to maintain their places in those those sides because the test players are not in the one day and the T20 teams for West Indies will most likely go back into the, their domestic franchise. So competition for places, again, will be very high. And not a single short ball handled nicely by Smith. And this in the county tournament coming at a very good time to have these players continuing to play longer format of cricket heading into the second half of the Cricket West Indies domestic four-day tournament. So kudos to the Ghana Cricket Board. I think they've done a very good deed, made a very good call. So we're still keeping our ears open when that game against, that script against the Select 11 will be called. It was scheduled to start same time that this one here at Providence but because of a Unsuitable venue at Enmore. It, is, it has not started as yet. So, over completed. 9 to 1 overall in the Burby's first innings. 327 for 8. That lead, 45 Miko Wanya. Yeah, it's climbing all the time. If it goes past 50, it'll be just a, just a bit of worry. Maybe on the skipper's mind. If that's a yeah, with the current condition that's a lot of runs to have as a deficit here <coughs> so just two two bullets used so far for Demerara this morning Burbis resumed 312 for 8 the lead at that time 30 runs, so they've added 15 runs this morning, extending it overall lead now to 45. So Sinclair is in the 90s, second batter this match to get into that territory. Anderson before him went on to get 100, just did not go on after that, went for 106. I was told by a Trinidadian friend that before this tournament started, Anderson actually had two centuries in Trinidad before coming here. That is third consecutive century then. That's very good. Clinton Pestano actually sent a, a message literally to all selectors around, maybe his county side and so on, because he got 100 yesterday, he got some wickets as well, playing for Cosmos in 
South Trinidad. So cricket is being played in Trinidad as well, the long format. And our very own Clinton Pestano, not selected for Burbis. Not in the Select 11 either. Was just in the Ghana Super 50 side. And somehow cannot find his way into one of these sides. Interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting indeed. Um, it's nice to see that, you know, there is that opportunity for our guys in Trinidad. I want to say a special shout out to Jason Passad, my cricketing friend, my bishop's lad, I should mention, John Ram Singh, who may be listening at this time. How are you? I, I don't think there's anyone who loves cricket more than Jason. So, keep listening there, JP. I think everyone in the cricketing circle will know Jason very well. Our good friend and brother, Matthew Kisun, will know him as well from the insurance company. They used to work at the same company. Appeal for like before. The umpire on the field, Shannon Crawford, and the umpire in the comebox says not out. And that's the end of another over for Mash Medner. That one pitching and clearly heading down the leg side. 328 for 8 at the end of the over. Yeah, sliding down. Easy decision. Yeah, the, the network is just so, such a, it's a small, again, it's a small country, and basically everyone knows everyone. Jason has been around for a while in the cricket, played table ball cricket with our table ball team, the Cardinals. Uh, that was many, many years ago. That was when the days of table ball was extra competitive. Our statistician, Sion Bovell, will know about that. It's quite different now. It's quite different now. What is different now, as you can see, the umpire, Wazir Danraj, with the new ball. So the second new ball is taken now. After 92 overs, so Leon Johnson will get that new ball. He's going to hand it to Christopher Barnwell. So after 92 overs in the Burbies first innings, Johnson looking to get a new ball, the second new ball into operation. Torrington, 10 overs. Ali Mohammed, 14 overs. Barnwell, 18 overs. The Seamers, and five wickets among the three with Barnwell and Ali Mohammed picking up two each. So Torrington, Young, Ali Mohammed Young, so with Barnwell, the experienced campaigner with the new ball. So maybe we'll see one of the guys sharing this new ball with him. He's coming from the northern end. It's a good time to bring in the new ball. Nothing was, has worked so far for Demarara. But Barnwell starts down the leg side. Almost like a Steve Harmison type start with that new cherry. I'm not sure he gets that online, causing the batsman to play. Yeah, the, the board, board batsmen seem very comfortable to crease at the moment. No ball. So no ball sent down by Christopher Barnwell. That's his second no ball. He had one with the old ball, now one with the new ball. And that will be the fifth partnership between Junior Sinclair and Niall Smith. 329 now for eight, and fifth the partnership for the ninth wicket. Very good going. Definitely, it's been a nice fight. One time we were wondering if they were even gonna get to 250, but now 329 for eight. So now they're looking at probably 350. That's another easy single there, being scored by Junior Sinclair. So it's a Easy breezy day for the guys. I don't think Smith will be worried too much about his scoring. He'll just be looking to occupy the crease, continue playing in that uh, solid defensive manner which he's been showing us so far.
upon the resumption of the regional four day tournament. Guyana will play the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, but that will be in the Twin Island Republic. I understand Guyana will then come back home to take on the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. Bold! Christopher Barnwell striking with the second new ball. In the very first over with the second new ball, it is Niall Smith who is bowled all over the place. Beautiful delivery from Barnwell coming back in the in swinger. And Niall Smith bowled for 24, 313 now for the loss of nine. Yeah, he just lost the plot there. He was going so well. And even after he got out, he's playing the shots that he should have played. That one was. Outside the line of the arm stump, he's looking to work that on the leg side, not presenting the full face of the bat, and it just went through the gate. So not uh, the best shot as compared to what we would have seen him, how he's batted so well thus far. But yet still a good uh, stand there by the number 10 batsman, Niall Smith. Showed good support to his partner, Junior Sinclair. Now it'll be all up to Shamar Joseph. So just stick around for a bit. I was making the point that when Niles Smith looked to be attacking, he looked off a bit awkward and then he would tend to lose his wicket. And that's exactly what happened. He was trying to play the booming cover drive to Barnwell. And Barnwell got the ball to already come back in after pitching. Nice inward movement, good lateral movement from Christopher Barnwell, the experienced campaigner. He's now picked up his third wicket. Had a wicket of Jonathan Fu and Anthony Bramble. Some big wickets Barnwell getting in this game so far. Yeah, been good wickets and smart bowling. I think he's bowled really well so far in this uh, in this match. Uh, a nice LBW to get rid of Bramble. And then a ball to Jonathan Fu. Seemed to be flowing at the moment. I just squared him up a bit, pitched on and just straightened up a bit. And edged it, and caught in the slip, and you know, clean bowling there. Well set, Niall Smith. So it's been good wickets for Christopher. New batsman, Shamar Joseph. Batting at number 11. Two slips and a gully in play now. That ball kept just a little bit low, a bit uncomfortable for the wicket keeper, Imlak. But Shamar Joseph. He is quite capable with the bat as well. In fact, he can be very close to being called a bowling all-rounder because he can hang around with the bat, can play some very good innings. He got a 20 out on debut in Antigua and Barbuda when Guyana Harp Eagles were playing against the Barbados Pride. Next game, got a Pfeiffer in Grenada against the Volcanoes. Appeal given. Yeah. All we're saying about Shamar Joseph as a batsman. And this time, Christopher Barnwell gets the second wicket of the over. We can see on the replay here, it was a very full ball, hitting him on the back foot. And umpire Wazir Danraj, the 60 year old from Essequibo Coast, has no hesitation in sending him on his way. Two wickets in the over to Barnwell, and that's the end of. Burbies in their first innings. Junior Sinclair leaving high and dry on 92. That lead, 48, could be very important still. Well bowled Barnwell, picking up four wickets for 54. Uh, as a neutral commentator, spectator of the game, I am uh, in a bittersweet moment. Firstly, I'm impressed with the uh, bowling of Christopher Barnwell. That's an excellent delivery. Beating the bat and hitting uh, Joseph on the back foot. But I'm also, my heart goes out to young Junior Sinclair missing out on his century. Well, the opportunity to get his century, uh, not out on 92. But it was a good stand. It was a good fight. Uh, Barbies now move on to, well, been dismissed for 330. All out, 93 overs. So it's a nice of the Demerara team to wrap up the, this innings. All right, so uh, as we look at the scoreboard. Uh, so play started at 9.30 promptly this morning on day number three, and just about 37 minutes later, Burbies all out. So that's the scorecard for Burbies. 
the highlight to consider 106 from Kevlin Anderson batting at number three. And Junior Sinclair at number eight, 92 not out, 25 from Pomal, 24 from Nile Smith at number 10. Batted in partnerships in the lower order, and they got to 330 all out from 93 overs. The first over with the second new ball, claiming the last two wickets this morning. But Junior Sinclair, who started the day on 84, just adding eight runs to that. Twenty-six extra is a very healthy contribution as well. And as we look at the bowling card, as we can see the standout bowler there being Christopher Barnwell with four for fifty-four from his nineteen overs. Richie Lucknow two for sixty-eight from his fifteen. Uh, Ali Mohammed two for sixty-three from fourteen. Steve Sankar picking up that set wicket of Anderson one for fifty-four from his eleven overs, and Torrington one for thirty-two. Other bowler, Ashmi Ned, uh, 24 overs, uh, 46 runs, but no returns for him. Probably looking to increase that, in, uh, improve that in the second innings. So that's the situation here on day number three, session one. Burby's resuming on 312 for eight. Bowled out now for 330. The lead overnight, 30, extended to 48. Sinclair started on 84, ending on 92, not out. Niall Smith started on 18, finished on 24. Last man dismissed, Shamar Joseph for second ball duck. Barnwell, a pick of the bowlers. We'll take a break, and we'll come back with the Demerara second innings.
Well, welcome back to Providence. We're getting ready for Demerara's second innings. First innings, 282. Burbis in reply, bowled out moments ago, 330. An overall lead of 48 runs for Burbis on first innings. Richie Look not 67, the highlight. Devon Imlak, half century as well. But Kevin Anderson, the first century of this match, the first century of this tournament. And Junior Sinclair, 92 not out, leaving high and dry this morning. Christopher Barnwell, pick up the bowlers for Demerara, 4 for 54. Look not, Ali Mohammed, two wickets apiece. We're ready for Demerara in their second innings. They're going to be starting in a short while. Mm -hmm. Joining me this morning is our colleague and brother, Matthew Kisun. Matthew, 48 runs, a lead for Burbies. Demerara will have to wipe off that deficit as they begin their second innings with Machu Nandu, the 19 year old, and Sachin Singh with him. Good morning, Matthew. Morning, John. Morning to viewers right across Guyana, the Eastern Caribbean region, whichever part of the world you're watching live streaming on the Guyana Cricket Board's page. Well, well, I think a little bit disappointing that Sinclair didn't get to that 100. That's number one. And number two, the lead, 48. I'm sure Barbies would have wanted to make that anything over 80 runs at least. That might have been a, a tricky lead to work with, knowing that you've got Sachin Singh, who didn't get anything much in the first innings, nor Matthew Nandu, even though he lasted for over, what, 60 balls plus or so. Um, they've got to come out now and do a good job for, Dem uh, for Demerara to, first of all, erase the 48 lead and then put some runs on the tins. But I, I thought maybe in the Barbies camp, a little bit of disappointment uh, from, two, from two sides of the coin, uh, Sinclair, Junior Sinclair, not getting that 100, and then that lead just being 48, maybe the tail enders could have uh, given Junior Sinclair a little bit more support, but then the veteran old boy, Christopher Barnwell, did the trick uh, this morning. And, and you, you cannot, you cannot uh, talk down experience. Experience is very important. Shepard, the first ball in the Demerara second innings was to Sachin Singh. So a pair of left-handers for Demerara starting. Sachin Singh, Demerara Cricket Club. Matthew Nandu, Everest Cricket Club. Nandu born and pretty much raised in Canada. Plays his cricket in Georgetown at, at the Everest Cricket Club. Started as a teenager. His father, Arjun Nandu, played for Guyana as a leg spinner. Very well bowled from Romario Shepard. So this new ball is going to be very interesting as well because we saw Christopher Barnwell, the second new ball, picking up two wickets in the first over to bowl out Burbies moments ago. So now we see some inward movement from Romario Shepard with this new ball. So they must make this new ball count. Yeah, so far he's on target. Sachin Singh only got, what, six in the first innings? Nine, in fact, from 25 balls. He wanted to, to stay there. Good delivery. Just pulled the bat inside the line. But I think Sachin Singh is the kind of player, sometimes he gets, he's plumb in front of his crease and he's a big LBW candidate. I've noticed that in my umpiring career. Uh, when I would umpire DCC and he would be playing for that club. He got out to LBW a couple of times. But contrasting skills in terms of the Nandus, father, son, one a bowler, a spin bowler, the father and the son is more a batsman. 61 balls he faced in the first innings for his 15. But he's a model of concentration. Not a good delivery on the middle stump. Shepard bang on target right away. A little bit more pace for Shepard would have made him an even more deadly bowler. And I think maybe that's why he's not quite considered at, at, for test cricket as yet for the West Indies. Jason Holder's got the height and he gets the bounce and so on, right? But uh, Shepard needed a little bit more pace. He's a strongly built young man. Uh, fast bowlers in the West Indies these days don't seem to be that strong. They break down very quickly. A little bit more wide of the off stump on that occasion. No trouble for Sachin Singh. But I think when you look at Shepard's strength, he's strong enough to actually 
maybe last a test series probably but his skills his bowling skills he needs to continue working on that because I actually believe that he can improve and develop into becoming a test bowler because if you've got a lot of bowlers that are breaking down these days they're not lasting two test matches three test matches it simply means that Azari Joseph will be under tremendous pressure to lead this bowling attack for the West Indies in years to come and that's going to be very tough for him first over comes to an end no run on the board for Demerara as yet. I remember when Shepard started his career at the four day level, had to work a long time taking the towels and the underwater. Head coach Ethan Crandon at that time and Rian Griffith, the assistant coach, they were working with him behind the scenes to get them to, to that final product before exposing him. Or when he, he actually got his opportunity. It showed how much preparedness had gotten into him before and how ready he was. And shortly after that, he went on to play for the West Indies as well. So he is a hard worker and can develop. So if he sets his sight on test cricket, I'm sure he will be able to achieve that as well. So Niall Smith is going to share the new ball with Shepard. Smith will be coming from the southern end of the ground here at Providence. The players' pavilion end. But look at those two names. Sachin Singh, Matthew Nandu. Sachin, maybe after Sachin Tendulkar. Matthew Nandu, maybe after Matthew Hayden. Cricketing names, you never know. Pastor Matthew Kisun. I thought you would have <laughs> said that first. Well, but got that in. you bounced in nicely with that. <laughs> Matthew Hayden, Matthew Elliott, Matthew Sinclair. A lot of Matthews in test cricket, actually. Yeah. It's a good name, you know. Sachin Singh is a left-hander. Sachin Tendoka, a right-hander. I think if Sachin Singh can get anywhere in terms of a semblance to Tendoka, he would be a, a proud man. Nice bounce and carry. Good start from Niall Smith. Riding on that wave of confidence after getting 24 this morning. Looked very good. But as soon as he decided to play an attacking stroke, lost his middle stump to Christopher Barnwell. I was actually surprised he got 24 runs because he's not really known for his batting skills. But it probably shows that if you dig in on a, a Providence pitch prepared by Habib and his team, just like the CPL pitches were nicely prepared and good for batting, that's on the middle stump, good delivery. Walking across Nandu, good technique by Nandu. I think it's all about your mindset. Uh, you've got to be strong mentally to be able to, to play out over 100 plus deliveries at least. You, you've got to be a model of concentration. Tate Chandra Paul, Shiv Chandra Paul is that. Uh, you look at uh, the likes of uh, Brian Charles Lara and those big scores he's had in his test career, you've got to be a model of concentration to really be that efficient in the longer version of the game. And the patience and application, look at Craig Brathwaite, for instance. Having someone like Tate Chandra Paul partner him, you can ask a better at this stage of West Indies cricket, knowing that the opening position has been a, a big problem for years for them. If Craig Brathwaite after Chris Gale would have scored all the centuries as an opener in test cricket, it says a lot about not finding a suitable, competent, compatible partner to open at the top. And that has posed big problems to West Indies. Ah, oh, that's wayward outside the legs. Tom didn't get the line right on that occasion, Niall Smith. But it's left up to Tate Chandra Paul now to continue building nicely on that start that he got. A baptism of fire in Australia, but with South Africa, uh, they're about to start maybe the test series shortly. Well, that says a lot, tomorrow actually. It, it, it's good for him because so far he has played against a top team in international test cricket and about to play against another top team as well. When I say top team, good enough side because you've got India and you know, New Zealand and England of course but you can never write off a team like South Africa. 
on the middle stump. Just coming off a double hundred, his maiden double hundred, Tej Narayan Chandapal against Zimbabwe. So he was riding on that wave of confidence. But he will recognize that it's totally a different kettle of fish altogether. Conditions may be similar, but also with a different bowling attack. Rabada, Nokia, etc. I would want to say maybe that series against Zimbabwe was very good batting practice for him to set him up for a good series against South Africa. Again, down the leg side, no chance of a run. The over comes to an end. Demerara have not been able to put a run on the board as yet in their second innings, still trailing by 48. Then the new find with the ball for West Indies. Left arm spin, Kurikesh Moti, the new sensation. Following him at youth level, I never thought Moti would have, uh, to me, he looked, looked like he got a bit taller and he put on a little bit more muscles and so on, but he was a, a small, tiny little youngster the on the 15 level and so on when I was following his cricket. Uh, you never felt I never got the impression that he may have gone on uh, to this stage now good shot through the offside but well fielded them are looking for their first runs we're in over number three but it shows the hard work you've got to put in with your cricket and now Moti's there uh, you've got the likes of Warikan you've got a Moti uh, Pumal not considered. So you're looking at the left-hand orthodox spinners in West Indies cricket. He's got to be the one that would go on because he's still a young man. Consistency, ability to pick up wickets and put the West Indies in good positions. That, that's what you need. You need a, a threatening test spin bowler in your side. I think down through the years we haven't had enough threatening spin bowlers. You look at uh, Dan Raj, Dinanath Ramnarain, and others, um, maybe not good enough. And they came at a time when, uh, in the mind of West Indies cricket, you still wanted your paces to do all the, the, the hard work. Well bowled, kept a bit low on middle and leg. Nandu jumping in, in fact, uh, Singh jumping inside the stumps there. Let's watch the replay. And that would have missed leg stump. Doing a little bit too much uh, down the leg side. Stifled the peel anyhow. Good bowling by Shepard. He's been bang on target basically so far. Nice rhythmic approach for the right arm Seema as well. Oh, this one came back after pitching outside the off stump this time. And Sachin Singh genuinely beaten. A little bit of extra pace as well from the right arm Seymour. Too good for him. Too good for him. Uh, and I think when you look at Sachin's uh, his little career in, the dom in domestic cricket, I think he needs to put in a, a lot of hard work. I don't think he is fit enough. I, I don't want to discredit him, but I think he has to work hard, a bit more harder. His batting skills need to improve, and he's, he needs to be fit. There is another guy as well, a good right-handed batter, Joshua, Joshua Passat, is he? Yeah, a good cricketer as well, but I think they need, he needs to put in a bit more work. He's got to work hard. You've got to be a fit cricketer. That's the problem with some of the youngsters who are very gifted and talented. Sankar as well uh, needs to put in some more work as well with his cricket. You want to play long version cricket? It's hard work. It's hard work on your body. That's another beauty. Unplayable for Sachin Singh. Brilliant over from uh, Shepard. Three maidens so far, three gone. There are still yet to put a run on the board. But fitness, key. You want to play longer version cricket? Got to work hard. Work very hard. Devindra, Devindra Bishu was a very fit cricketer. Versami Pumal is still a very fit cricketer. 
look at his age, what, 33? These guys are fit cricketers. And I think, I don't think it's a lucrative situation for test fast bowlers now in the West Indies. Uh, they're not, maybe not working hard enough because of what test cricket demands of you. See, if you can bowl four overs in a T20 match and earn a lot of money, what's wrong with that? Or bowl 10 overs in a 50 over competition, what's wrong with that? And even some of them are unable to bowl 10 overs. So it's a major problem that our cricket face. It's a crisis that we are in in terms of quality fast bowlers. Mindley went to Australia, only bowled two balls. Full toss. And first runs to Demerara. That was a gift there from Smith. Would have liked to do a bit more with that, maybe get a boundary from that, but the, the, the timing and the placement, not impeccable. But, Ma, but Nandu gets off the mark. Real crisis has hit West Indies cricket with fast bowlers, especially for test cricket. You mentioned that physical fitness. The mental fitness is, a, is another aspect of the game. They have to work hard on to maintain that physical fitness and that match awareness. And someone like Shift and the Paul speaks a lot about mental toughness. Beauty of a delivery this time from Niall Smith, just pitching and leaving Singh as he probed forward. Just minimum away movement, not, not exaggerated away movement, was just enough to be the outside edge. Again, the problem with Singh, flat footed in, in the crease, very tentative with foot movement. Sometimes the balance not good enough for him. It's a real test for him now. He has an opportunity. It's been wrong a little while now, Sachin. And the consistency, not with Niall Smith, just too wide of the mark this time. I'm sure had he gotten anywhere close to, to replicate the previous delivery, Sachin would have been in a whole lot of trouble. But that consistency again, you mentioned maybe mental fitness, physical fitness, not on Niall Smith's side. But well, since we were on fast bowling, the topic, what are your thoughts on the likes of Max Sween? And then, of course, you've got Anderson Phillip uh, from Trinidad. I love to see Jaden Seals get back in. He did have a, an operation, I think, on his knee. I think he's quick, um, Jaden Seals. What are your thoughts on fast bowlers coming through in West Indies cricket now? There are a few around, those names you mentioned. There's also McKenny Clark. We saw him at the youth level. We saw him last season in CPL. Anderson, I think, um, yeah, it has some work to do. Maybe he had maybe a few... Years ago, it would have been the ideal uh, pick, but it has not developed fast enough. There's a guy, left arm seamer, Sharon Lewis, from Trinidad and Tobago. He's also a candidate, but then we look at fitness again. There's a young seamer as well from Tobago. He's actually good as an all rounder, James. So there are a few around, but you need to have them, let's say, in an academy, in a little clinic or something, working with Sir Kurt Lee Ambrose, mm -hmm. maybe Sir Andy Roberts, you know, to get them to be maybe the final product for the world. Loose drive, beats the outside edge, over completed. Them are in their second innings, one without loss. What about Akeem Jordan that, that is with the West Indies um, team in South Africa currently? What are your thoughts on him? I think he's been rewarded for his consistency. But he's not one of those uh, tear away fast mm -hmm. bowlers that we would love to see back in West Indies cricket. But he can handle his, his own, can hold his own. Nice containing type of bowler. And has that del surprise delivery. He's not a very tall man either, Akeem Jordan. So he has worked hard 
and has been rewarded for its consistency, but not one of those that we'll see intimidating battles. Would you have picked him for the for South Africa tour? Who would have you, you <laughs> who would you have given the edge to? It would have been a tough decision really to, to go with Akeem Jordan as a first pick. With the likes of Shepard oh. Starts and Yova. There's a Winwood Islands fast bowler. That was not part of the first two rounds. Because of injury. Um, he was one of the persons that I would have perhaps looked at. That name slipping. If you've gone back to Shannon Gabriel, I saw Shannon Gabriel in the Super 50. Looked much different. Physically fitter. Bowling a lot faster as well. So Shannon Gabriel would have been there. Leg by signal this time by the other Shannon, Shannon Crawford. <laughs> Shannon Stanton Crawford. You believe in Shannon Gabriel? I believe in Shannon Gabriel. Okay, yeah. he's got the pace. Got the pace. He's intimidating. Maybe that no ball issue. You know, just went in a good spell. Tried to release the pressure by delivering consistently. No balls. So the likes of a, the likes of a Obed McCoy, they're, they're really for white ball cricket. And um, Sheldon Cottrell. Yeah, those guys with the extra pace and so on they have. But lately you've seen that the inkling towards more of that white ball cricket. Um, Ocean Thomas, not sure what's happening with him. Yeah. But Obed McCoy, I'm not sure if he's quite interested in red ball cricket. But would have been a good option, with, especially with the left arm variety. Edged and dropped. Mm. The outside edge of Sachin Singh was found. But a fielder at that fourth slip, unable to hold on. Looks like Junior Sinclair. It is Junior Sinclair. And Sachin Singh given a life before he has gotten off the mark. And the unlucky bowler, Romario Shepard. No movement of the feet. Nothing at all from Sachin Singh. Just flashed the bat at it. That's poor batsmanship from the young man. It flew off very quickly. So good pace being worked up now by Shepard. And Sinclair just unable to hold on to that one. Now he's moved a little bit to his left, Junior Sinclair. And this time Sachin gets an over pitch delivery and drives down towards cover could get into the boundary it does four runs to him what a comeback it always happens in cricket you get a chance next delivery a four sees off the mark with a boundary in the fifth over six without loss there's some other names we can call to what about young Simmons from Trinidad the left hand bowler a young plane they're making. Oh, it's from Barbados, actually. Barbados, beg your yeah, pardon. Yeah. Right. Simmons, Simmons, yes. Yeah. What about him? A left hand seamer. Short uh, guy. Yes. Both, Strong, though. Both quick. Yeah, he can. Right. You're attacking. I think you'd be in. So maybe if you could get him to be in, I can, I, I can all round, though. Because of that, it was not an intimidating fastball. He gets the ball to move laterally. Right. Maybe an ideal pick maybe for limited overs. You made me but he's a candidate as well. Yes. We, must, we can also look at, yes. You made me remember Pedro Collins. Get the ball to swing in, come into right-handers. Very deadly ball he I, was. I always like the left-arm variety, Matthew. Yes, I agree with you on that. But you still think Mark Kindo Minley has a chance? Mark Kindo Minley, as he overcomes to an end, six without loss, them are in the second innings, reminds me so much of Anderson Phillip. Came on the scene, Boston picked up wickets locally in original domestic uh, uh, tournaments, but was not able to go on for one reason or the other. And they've maintained that consistency in terms of pace, but not anything express. So really blast out oppositions. So you really want to see that extra firepower. 
So Mindley and Anderson Phillip may be in the same bracket for me. Smith starts a new over. Nandu gets a very good delivery. So both of these batters now having some anxious moments. That was pitched up. Nandu playing on the wrong line. With our topic on fast bowlers, you look at Demerara. Uh, fast bowling lineup. It cannot be compared necessarily to Borbis's lineup. When you look at Nile Smith and Shamar Joseph and Romare Shepard in particular. The old boy Barnwell had to chip in and pick up four wickets based on great experience that he has. Ronaldo Ali Mohammed not fast, just the wrong medium, not doing much with the ball. So Demerara would have been a little bit poorer in that sense in terms of the richness of their fast bowlers, a little bit poorer. Torrington, young man, one for 32 in his, uh, in his bowling stint. And of course, they've, they've got more of the spinners that they had to depend on. Ned Loknot and Sankar. So the name from the Windward Islands volcanoes that was slipping me, Sherman Lewis. Sherman is actually a bowler that came on from the youth cricket days and has been nagging, showing consistency, has some pace as well, and is one, I think, that we can look at in the near future for West Indies cricket. Sherman is not, an ex uh, not necessarily an old guy as well, just burst onto the scene, maybe early 20s or thereabout. Al Smith was on in tongues of some of the selectors recently, but that consistency yeah. just not there for him. But started this season, so he has the opportunity to, to kick on. So it's a difficult thing to really find uh, the tear away fast bowlers in West Indies cricket now. Very difficult. Yeah, so Sherman Lewis, 27 years old. Mm -hmm. but there's another candidate that our statistician has just thrown into the, the hat, Chimar Holder. You, you know what? I actually thought about him just now. I was going to ask you about him. I liked him. Not sure what's happening with him. But he actually showed a lot of promise after coming through the ranks as well, alongside Obed McCoy. Odin Smith. And you had young Shamar Springer as well, a little oh. bit of him, right? On a 19 World Cup, guys, you yeah. know, but not uh, going on. I would love to see Shamar Holder getting an opportunity. Not sure where he is because not even in the Barbados Pride setup right now. A couple of series ago, I think his name was being mentioned a lot, but not considered. Six overs gone, Demerara in their second innings, seven without loss, still behind by four to one runs. So the openers for Demerara, they face lots of deliveries. But if you look at what's to come, Imlak, Akshay Pasad, Leon Johnson, Christopher Barnwell, Ronaldo Ali Mohammed. Which look not good batting lineup on paper, but just 282 in the first innings when conditions were pretty much, you would say, much better for batting. Now that the pitch is getting a bit old, you see some balls keeping a bit low, you see some maybe 
See some very other bounce as well, kicking. So Nandu is there, a model of concentration, likes the first. He models himself after Shivnar and Chandapal. So you want about very long leg shift, but you need to score a little bit more. Tend to back, uh, bat himself into a hole. As you can see with that full toss he got to get off the mark. That was a very loose delivery, and batters would want to take advantage of that. It caught him by surprise. By surprise, and then he was you know, not in a mood to really put it away. Just stroked it for a single. So that's the type of person he is at the moment, Nandu. Very young, 19 years of age. You need to work on finding the gaps a bit more regularly. That way you tend to give the bowlers more work, you have to think about what next to do. At the moment, Shepard and Al Smith is just comfortable landing in pretty much one area, keeping the batters in check. So the batsmen can put bowlers under pressure as well. I'm talking about batsmen, we can switch from our bowling topic to batsmen mm -hmm. now because if you've got Tage, Chandra Paul, and Brathwaite open end, and should anything go wrong with those two guys in terms of injury, who can we look to in West Indies cricket? As openers, let's say you want to pick uh, talented batters. Nice shot, but just for one. Who would you want to consider in the batting artillery of West Indies cricket? Let's say top four positions. The batting order. Who Love, are some of the players? I witnessed for a stand 192, brilliant 192 debut, sorry, uh, maiden 100 from Kimani Milias just recently, the young St. Lucian. But then he got injured in the second game. But that's someone you must be looking at. He was off the volcano's radar for a little bit, went back to the drawing board, came back with a bang. And Singh strokes this one into the onside, square in the square leg region for a, a double. A direct hit could have been interesting there. And Smith not able to hit the woodwork. Athenaeus has just got an opportunity with the test side. He's in South Africa. Both Windward Islands young players. So these are some of the guys you must be able to start calling like you almost immediately. Well, you've got your eyes on. Even before you, you, you comment on that, Sachin Singh a, little, a bit more stronger on the leg stump, but his running between the wickets leaves a lot to be desired as well. I know, I know he's been run out on a few occasions in domestic cricket as well. I like Keegan Simmons coming through the under 19s from Trinidad Tobago. Very composed, stylish left handed batsman as well. So one of the persons I was looking at was Keegan Simmons, but did, did not start for the Trinidad Red Force this year. Got his opportunity only after Vikash Mohan was injured in the first match. Our very own Tevan Imlak, quite capable in front and behind the stumps. He has shown that, but needs to be Converting those fifties into hundreds now, Imlak. Seven overs gone, Demerara ten without loss. Reducing the deficit now to 38. Sing on three, Nandu. Sing on six, Nandu on three. Once given the opportunity as well, I think Teddy Bishop on the 19 player, a century in the, the last on the 19 World Cup for the Westerners. 
He's also an open batsman, so somebody, someone you can really work with. But needs to start getting opportunities more with his franchise. So that you can have a look at him. So there's some names out there that we can get into that circle and try to polish them to bring on that shine. But I think we're seeing these uh, in test cricket, hard pressed to find uh, outstanding batsmen who can really go on and build strong careers for themselves and playing for the team as Shamar Joseph comes into the attack. A name, I guess, that will be on the radar maybe after this regional tournament, based on how he performs, young Shamar Joseph. I think uh, Demaral will be very hard pressed to get in excess of 300 and maybe 25 runs here to make a good game of it, uh, taking the deficit off 48. If you give Barbies anything over 275 to win, could be very good, reasonably enough. There is Nandu chasing a very wide ball from Shamar Joseph in his very first over, and it goes behind the wicketkeeper and first slip. No signal coming from the umpire. Now he signals by, by his umpire, oh, Wazir Danraj. Exaggerated movement, you will say. Lots of swing, lots of movement. Pete Bramble went behind Jonathan Fu at first slip. And umpire was not sure what happened here. It took a very long time. He's looking across to the square leg to umpire Shannon Crawford for some guidance. Yeah, so four buys nonetheless. Body language is good between the umpires out there because had he got a touch onto that, Shannon Crawford would have done like this, tapped his, his hand. This time he's taken. Nandu follows it again. And second slip holds on. Kevlin Anderson making no mistake. A young Nandu, all the talk about being consistent, has gone. Caught at second slip. Shamar Joseph striking his very first over. Nandu gone for three. Demar in the second innings, 14 for the loss of one. Took the toe end of the bat. Nandu pretty much opened the face of the bat, following that ball and gifting his wicket to away. You'd want to say a very loose shot. You would see him leaving those deliveries outside his off stump. This time, followed it and giving Shamar Joseph a wicket in his first over, just his second delivery. Well, well, he looked unsettled, to be honest. When Shamar Joseph came on, the previous delivery was that wide that he didn't get a touch on to it. Now, why chase after such wide deliveries? You're the opener. You've got to dig in there and show that you're solid enough to play with good technique. Don't go after those wide deliveries. And he was set up. The, the slip scoring, well set there for that. Shamar Joseph pounced on an opportunity where he saw a little weakness in Nandu there, uh, going after wide deliveries and picked his man up. That was poor cricket from the young 19-year-old, who's very talented, but very poor cricket to follow that one. He could have allowed that one to go by uh, outside the off stump. But it shows, John, that as much as you're a good player in the making, Every innings you've got to treat with, 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 with a lot of uh, care and concern and caution, and you've, and you've got to be on the ball in terms of your technique, right? It, it's another test for you every time you, you come out to bat as an opener, especially, and um, he hasn't had a, a good first match here uh, for Demerara, 15 and now three, uh, with Tevin Imlak coming out, who's had a good first in his knock of 62 so far and has done well behind the stumps uh, so far. Uh, he's a very promising young cricketer, but not good enough, Fernando. You'd be very disappointed with that. But we will all like to say things like, he's 19 years old. He's got age in his favor. But if you've got age in your favor, you've got to start developing your technique from as young as you are, because when you get older, it tends to get a little bit more difficult. But he's gone. And a good blow struck by Borbies. Imlak, right-handed batsman, replacing left-handed Nandu. But as a good blow 
from Joseph, picking up the early wicket. So they are yet to wipe off that deficit, still trailing by 34. Shamar Joseph got a second ball duck this morning, picking up a wicket with his third delivery of the morning, replaced Niall Smith. Smith sent down three overs, one maiden, two runs, did not pick up a wicket. Now Shamar Joseph losing his run-up. But we saw the exaggerated away movement from Joseph to the left-handed batter. How he will bowl to the right-handed batsman now, with the left-hander still adding on strikers, and it's left to be seen. But that we were speaking about earlier, that consistency, mental fitness, to be able to make the adjustment quickly, we'll see. He's 23 years old, Shamar Joseph. At 19 years old, persons like Brian Lara, Carl Hooper, Shiv Chandapal, Ramnari Sarwan, Darren Ganga, they were ready for international cricket. So you said Matthew Nandu, it's only 19. Need to be thinking international cricket already. There's a guy, Casey Carty from the Leeward Islands Hurricanes, not a young player. Amir Jangu from the Trinidad Tobago Red Force, had some time over with the Hurricanes as well. So these are some other young players that we can also look at. But consistency is the name of the game, Pastor. You can only improve in terms of consistency if you're mentally strong as well. Mental strength has really interfered with West Indies cricket a lot. I, I found that to be so. If the mental is not in order, it's difficult to perform. Uh, talent alone, raw talent alone cannot do it for West Indies cricket anymore. Maybe in T20 cricket, which is a different version of the game, but certainly not for test cricket. Eight overs gone, 14 for one. Clyde Butts off the other cricketing duties this morning on the Escuba coast. He was worried about the Demra Harbour Bridge, but Clyde, the bridge is up and running. You'll be fine. So Miku Wanya will join you now, good pastor. And maybe the cricket discussion will continue for some of his favorite young players or those around the region he has his eyes on. Shepard, four overs, two maidens, none for seven so far. He's been good. Good lines, good lengths. Sachin Singh looks a little bit more positive now. After being dropped by Junior Sinclair. And then he got a boundary the next ball. Uh, Mikuwanias rejoined me. You've gone two marathon days as well. This is day three for you in commentary. Well done, young man. Good, uh, good morning to you. Good morning, Matthew. Well, you know I'm an umpire, so that stamina is still there. That's a loose shot from Sachin Singh. I, I like the ploy of the Barbies bowlers there, trying to induce the batsmen to reach out and play some shots outside the off stump. So they're testing and tempting them there just wide of the off stump. They got one in Matthew Nandu, unsettled him with that ploy, and they're working on Sachin Singh. Yeah, they've uh, been bowling a, a more consistent line thus far for the innings, hitting that, you know, on, on and just about outside off stump. Uh, Shepard has been leading the way. Uh, so they're going to keep persisting on this line, trying to, as you mentioned, get the Demerara batsman to maybe play a foul shot. You know. Imlak will be looking to continue in his good form. Sachin, you'd want to get his name up there. Someone of the selectors to maybe take notice of him. 
very successful at the youth level, the junior level. But as you say, you know, you're playing with the big boys now. You've got to step up. Any young players coming through in the Caribbean that you've had your eyes on in terms of test cricket development, developing into test cricketers for the West Indies? That you can think about. I don't want to put you under any pressure if you haven't been checking on them, you know, players that much. But maybe you may want to call a few names that you think well, are reasonable. Well, I'll be heavily biased towards Ghana. <laughs> Very heavily biased towards Ghana, of course. We have uh, what we call a young China Paul in the team. But, you know, just in this game, I'm looking at, at the Anderson and, uh, you know, his batting. It's been a while since I've seen him really bat for such a long period of time. And it was very impressive the way he went about scoring, his use of the crease, scoring on both sides of the wicket. It was really impressive. So I think he is definitely someone for the future that, you know, just off the top of my head. Right now. I like that name. Mm -hmm. Good consideration there, Miku. Anderson. Hmm. I guess he'll have to get into a B team and so on, play, you know, practice matches for West Indies B team and so on, and work his way up. I think he's that promising as the over comes to there. Nine gone, 14 for one, Demarar. Um, I think he's a very promising cricketer, and I believe that uh, the pundits in West Indies cricket feel that way as well about him. Yeah, but it's always going to be hard work. It's always going to be hard work. As you get higher, the competition is even greater. So you've just got to continue being that standout player as best as you can. Of course, you need a bit of favor to fall on your side as well. Uh, uh, right now, I'm, uh, my mind just went on young Yadram. Mashka uh, Yadram. And, you know, I'm not seeing him around at the moment, so I don't know what is happening to him. I'm told that he would, uh, would have migrated, so that was another young, up and coming player. Even as we look at the Demerar Harbor Bridge now, traffic is flowing. We're currently in Demerara. That bridge links two regions, and you go a bit further when you cross the bridge and you get into the county of Essequibo. That bridge has lived long, eh? Should have been a 20-year-old 20, 20 bridge. I think it's about 45 years now old. Built in the 70s. Right, 78. Might, I'm, I've got to get that right. I'm not sure. 78, thereabouts. Uh, it's, it's before I was born, so, you know. 40, tell you. 45 years up. Look at that. And it's a key, key bridge in terms of transportation in this country. A lot of Guyanese have got vehicles now, so traversing that harbor bridge is very, very key to commerce and industry production. Uh, a lot of children have to get to school in Georgetown, in the capital city. There are a lot of workers as well that come from the West Demerar area. I think it will be a great relief when that second bridge is, is constructed. Definitely, uh, it will be something uh, better, more modern, and a greater service to the Guyanese people. I think they would have already completed the bidding process with that. So uh, it's, the work is on the way. Just have to be patient uh, and wait for uh, that opening day. Don't worry, we'll be alive for that. We'll be a four-lane four bridge as well. I thought that's very good. Good thinking in terms of vision. Tucks him up on the back foot, gets a quick single into the offside, Sachin Singh. Looking to play a little bit more smarter now. I think he's trying to settle in proper. Seven on this belt, got nine in the first innings. Tevin Imlak, another name I thought you, 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 you probably would have called, but um, John Ramsing did mention him. But 
He's another good youngster, came through the under 19 World Cup a couple of years ago. But he seems to be coming on a bit now with his cricket. Played with the Het Myers and what, the Kimo Paul, but he, he's now apparently coming on a bit, getting into some form, batting better, has gained a bit more body strength as well. I guess he's in the gym and working hard at his, his physical fitness and his game. Good wicket keeper as well. He, he did wicket keeping duties in the World Cup, on the 19 World Cup. It would be good to see him come on. Nice shot. Play through that mid wicket area just for a single. You know, Imlek has been, you know, always been a steady, hard worker, even at the youth level. You know, he's always been there, been getting excellent support by his father. I know, especially at the youth level, there wasn't a game where his father was not present. So that's good to see. And, you know, he would be proud to see how his son has kicked on to be at this level. Outside that off stump. 10 overs completed. It is 17 for 1. Demerara in their second innings. We're here at the National Stadium of Providence in the Ghana Cricket Board four day senior male inter county tournament. The return of the four day. So Demerara still need to wipe off 31 to make Burby's bat again. Shepard, five overs, three maidens, none for seven. I'll ask our score to tell me how many minutes Sachin Singh has been a decrease so far for his seven runs? Fifth to one minutes. Uh, the longer you spend out in the middle, it tends to be better for you. Get a feel of the pitch and you can play better, more freer, and that's where you can strike form. Sachin Singh needs to stay there. I mean, you've always got to maintain that concentration because uh, in the first innings we saw um, Sachin and Nando, they, they had that foundation, they had a base, but they just weren't able to kick on. I think Nando occupied a lot of time at the crease, but, but it was just uh, that moment that a moment of maybe distraction and he kind of just threw his wicket away. So you'd always want to maintain that concentration throughout the innings. Look, he's faced out the four balls so far, Sachin Singh. Uh, Nandu faced 15 in the first innings, faced 61 balls. So you look at, you look at young cricketers at the top of the order and they want to develop. You've got to face a lot of balls. Chandra Paul used to bat for very long periods, probably for an entire day. I think David Warner admired him so much. He asked him for a couple of tips on what made him into that kind of cricketer. And I think when Chandra Paul shared, shared that stuff with him, I think he he learned from it and he himself developed David Warren into a fine cricketer, all around cricketer, all formats of the game. T20, 50 over test cricket. Yeah. David Warner is, is such a talent, you know, an aberration. See someone who is so destructive and yet still so successful in all the formats. It's quite amazing. You know, at the beginning, I thought, well, maybe with his style of play, um, probably wouldn't last long in test cricket as being too aggressive or so, but it's been proven wrong. I guess you can count on your fingers how many cricketers worldwide 
in, well, in international cricket, are good at all three versions of the game, all three formats. You can count on your fingers. We have Virat Kohli, of course, David Warner. Are you going to put Kane Williamson in that? Yes. Steve Smith. Babar. Thank you, Sion. Uh, Steve Smith, one of my favorite cricketers. Uh, looking at the replay here. Roy Sharma, too, he's playing test cricket a bit more now. I, I just love the Steve Smith story, as in how he came up to be, um, who he was, how he started, and then just developed as this excellent batsman. Th th those are great stories, man, really good. Yes, I think we're trying to develop the likes of a Kyle Mears from a West Indian standpoint. Would you put Ben Stokes in that? He does have a double century. Yes, yes. Ben Stokes has to be there. The over comes to an end. 11 gone, 17 for 1. There is a guy I like from Zimbabwe. I've seen him as a pretty good cricketer. Sikander Raza. Very good cricketer. He's playing quite a lot now in terms of T20 cricket as well. And you've got to spot good cricketers all, all across the globe. You look at South Africa and you look at uh, players like, uh, well, the guy who's captain in the team now. Bavuma. Bavuma. I've always thought Bavuma is not a bad cricketer at all. I guess it's all about consistency. But he's, he's also now the test captain. He's been appointed the test captain. Aidan Markram and um, some of the other guys at the top of the order for South Africa would certainly want to come good in this test series. Yeah, Bavuma's been under a lot of pressure. He has been. Uh, for his leadership role. And I was actually surprised when they made him the test captain. Um, uh, Dean Elgar, no longer there, but uh, yeah. But I hope that Bavuma can, you know, use the pressure as fuel and try to develop. And I want him to be successful as a captain, but maybe he can just hold off on that success, just until the West Indies a finished story. <laughs> really hope our boys do well in South Africa. Yeah, Dean Elgar's had a bad run with the bat uh, in recent times. Well, that's going to be an interesting series as Shamar Joseph continues. He's bowling from the southern end of the National Stadium. We're heading up towards lunch on day three. But I think overall uh, it's been a good battle. Um, between these two sides and the restart of inter-county cricket after an absence of nine years. It's been a good start. Um, it's been a keen contest so far and Barbies with the edge 48 runs uh, in front of Demerara would certainly put him under pressure. I think Demerara will be hard pressed as I said earlier to get up to 300 plus. That's a tall ask. Yeah, you know you got to look at the what a four-day cricket does is just builds your stamina, your concentration, because it's four days, as it says. And a lot of young guys would have probably never had this experience playing for the four days. I mean, we had a three-day tournament for quite a while. So maybe tomorrow morning will be a telling morning, because that's when the chips are really going to be on the card. Because at that point, somebody's going to be driving home for the win. So we have to see how that goes. Or even battling to save the game. It's my belief that that's when you earn your stripes as an umpire, as a cricketer. Is that the bottom of the fourth day? First day is easy, second day is easy. But bottom of the fourth day, that final afternoon, that's when the pressure is really going to be on mentally and physically.
you've been involved in some of that in, in your in your career as an umpire yes four day cricket I like what Joseph is doing he's testing the concentration span of Sachin Singh here by bowling the ball wide of the off stump to see if he's going to go for a big shot flash at it get the outside edge you've got four men waiting there for Barbies for that flashing shot yeah, discipline as a cricketer is of such great importance you know that's why they call it test cricket it, 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 this isn't test but that's why we call the highest level test because mm -hmm. it tests every single uh, uh, being every single faculty emotions all of that well bowled in the block hole on the middle stump turned away, turned away to square leg for no run 12 overs gone them around their second innings they need to erase 48 to make Barbies bat again they're 17 for one yeah it's been slow going thus far 17 runs from 12 overs just about one run per over so Barbies keeping the screws on here Sing seven from 40 balls, 60 minutes. He's been out there for an hour, just one boundary. Nandu got three from 20 balls. Imlak, 12 balls with two, 23 minutes. He's going to try and buckle down. And Pamal is going to come into the attack now. But uh, you look down the, the batting order. Akshay Prasad is a, a young man who will be under a lot of pressure. What a nice 25 in that game against the Windwards that stretched that game to ensure there was a draw. His 25 was a good contribution. If that will keep him in the team, the Guyana side, for the next rung, or the next few rungs, we'll have to wait and see. Well, you know, ideally we don't want a situation where we're picking players based on, you know, that one outstanding innings, but we want to look for more consistency. And you're going to look at your stats at some point. Uh, I think Akshaya averages nine runs at the first class level. <coughs> Swept down to fine leg for one. <coughs> Imlak is on three. Sachin Singh comes into strike now. He'll face up to Pamal for the first time, who will bowl over the wicket left hand over the wicket good time for Pumal to come on as well because you've had your, your fast bowlers on for 17 overs now with about 8 minutes to lunch on day 3 change things up have them thinking now the veteran left hand orthodox spin of the mall is on and you're talking to young men who really want to impress in terms of their batting careers i think this is an ideal situation for pramal you know a very cunning bowler you know, looking to outfox the batsman i think he'd be targeting uh, sachin just a bit more because of uh, his lack of experience at this level. So you've got to be careful. They're looking for the second run. Sent back by Imra. Five hundred and seventy nine first class wickets to Pamal. What That's else what else can you ask of him? That's a whole lot. He obviously would have wanted to play more test cricket for the West Indies what nine nine test matches yes nine tests 31 wickets would have wanted to have those stats a little bit better 
maybe about 25, 30 test matches at least, with about 60, 70 wickets plus, 75 wickets on his belt. He's been around for a very long time, Follow him, followed him since at youth level. His career just didn't pan out as, you know, we would have wanted. Just didn't kick on at that highest level. But at the regional level, he has been dominant. Tarting over is gone. It is 19 for 1. So you call him the regional bully, uh, as you would call Barnwell the domestic bully. <laughs> As they say, you've got to <laughs> dominate wherever you are. You've got to play a lot of cricket. If you want to become a good batsman, a good cricketer, a lot of cricket has to be played. The opportunities have to be, have to be there for a lot of cricket to be played as well. So the whole structure of West Indies cricket, uh, the domestic to tournaments and so on. And so there's call for, even though you have CPL, uh, there's a call for a West Indies tournament, purely West Indies T20 tournament that does not involve overseas players. Very interesting indeed. Yeah, I, I think that would be great. I think uh, we had that previously. Correct. Right, so maybe we can have both with the CPL, but we all know it's a very packed year and you know I I have my issues with the huge window granted just for the IPL that takes away so much from cricket but the guys they want to earn as much as they can as well so yes that's the main factor in terms of we seeing this cricket actually going on to to become better uh, in all three formats, success of West Indies cricket depends a lot on how much the guys are willing to be committed and dedicated and faithful to West Indies cricket, in addition to earning good money from franchise cricket. And so the timetable of events, cricket events in the year, the cricket timetable is very stiff, for even from an ICC level. It's very, very difficult to get in a lot of cricket, especially even, even in the West Indies here, in our region. We have spectator there in the green stand, so as you can see there's lots of space here for you. You know, it, it, we just you've got to accept that it's never going to be the same. And you know, you mentioned the word faithful. I, I think we need to be cautious with that because at some point, you know, the guys are going to want to maximize their potential while they are still able to. Look at this delivery here, a nice lifting delivery just outside the line of the arsenal. And so, so there's a lot of factors involved, a lot of factors involved there. That's a lovely delivery ball there by Joseph in his fourth over. Yeah, but I think if we can see that replay one more time, we see Joseph is actually running all the way down the pitch. I think the umpire is going to look at that. Oh, that is not good at all. Umpire is probably going to have a word with him if he continues that to the left hander. And it's a four. Four there by Sachin Singh on the offside. Yeah, he's gone into double figures, 12 now. A good boundary to him. So they're working at this deficit, Demarar. 25 to get to make Borby's bat again. One delivery left to complete over number 14 by Shamar Joseph, one for seven so far. So he's the man that has picked up the wicket of Nandu. A swell ball coming into the left-hander. 
jumping inside his stumps. The over comes to an end, 14 gone. 23 for one, Demerara. Yeah, that was much better there by the jo uh, Joseph. Keeping off the protected area of the pitch. All right, uh, so now 14 overs gone. 11 28 is the time here. Uh, we very soon we'll be having that luncheon interval. Have you seen the golden arrowhead blowing in the breeze? The flag of Guyana with the beautiful palm trees in the background. Green on the green on the flag actually represents the trees, our flora. Should be the final over to lunch. We'll have to wait and see how the umpires tend to judge it in terms of time. Because Pamal gets through his overs very quickly too. I think it's 11, 29 and a half and 30 seconds. So it should be the final over. Just to let you know, Barbies' innings came to a close this morning. 330 all out, 93 overs. Unfortunately, Sinclair didn't get up to that 100. He was left stranded on 92. 145 balls, 9 fours, 4 sixes, 207 minutes. Accident from the young man. 26 extras of, made up of 13 no balls, 11 leg buys, and 2 buys. And Barbies led by 48 runs in the first innings. Barnwell picking up both wickets to have fallen this morning. Niall Smith went for 24. He was bowled by Barnwell. And Joseph, two deliveries after that. Leg before wicket to Barnwell without scoring. So the lead 48 and them are working away at it. They've lost Nandu, caught second slip. That's Anderson, who had a brilliant 100 in the first inning of Barbies. Bowl Joseph for three, 14 for one in the eight over. Just a 14 run partnership at that stage for that first wicket. And since then, Tevin Imlak has joined Sachin Singh, who's had a, a chance, was dropped. I think when he was on two. And he's since gone on to score 12. He's into double figures, got nine in the first innings. Imlak is three. And with the final delivery, the complete over number 15 and probably take us to lunch. He's across. Well. Defense pushes it out into the offside. The over comes to an end. 15 gone, 23 for one. And the players will leave for lunch. So at lunch on day three, Demerara needing to erase 48 to make uh, Barbies bat again. They're 23 for one with Singh on beating on 12. Imlak Three not out. Nandu went for three. Caught Anderson slip. Second slip bowl. Joseph for three. The only wicket to have fallen in the Demerara second innings thus far. Pamal, well, bowling figures for you. We'll give you that in a moment. So Singh 12 from 48 balls. 72 minutes with two fours. And Imlak three. 35 minutes, 22 balls. He hasn't hit uh, any boundaries as yet. Uh, Shepard, six overs. Uh, four maidens done for seven. Smith, uh, three overs, uh, two runs, one maiden, no wicket. Joseph, four overs, uh, two maidens, one for seven. And Pamal, two overs, one maiden, none for two. So that's it here from Providence. At lunch, uh, uh, Demerara, they're 23 for one. Do rejoin us in about 35 minutes' time when we continue uh, the live streaming here at the National Stadium Providence.
pleasant afternoon to once again and welcome back to the National Stadium here at Providence in beautiful Guyana. Ready for session number two. Day number three, Demerara against Burby's Senior to County four day tournament, round one. For the first time in the Jeet Basad, Clyde Bot's gone on to other cricketing duties in the county of Essequibo, coaching the kiddies in the Five for Fun, sponsored by Republic Bank. So, Inajit, good afternoon, welcome. Good afternoon, John. Hello to listeners. It's a pleasure to be back at the National Stadium once again, watching top class cricket in Guyana, Inter County. So, clear to begin after lunch. Sachin Singh on strike. So, Demra are in their second innings at lunch 23 for 1. They had to wipe off a deficit of 48. So, they're still trailing, still some work to do. This one, Sachin Singh hits back over the head of the bowler. First run after lunch, and it's in the form of a boundary to the pugnacious Singh. That was a fine shot, John. That is what you call calculated aggression. It was deliberate. He reached for the pitch of the delivery, and realizing that the Medon was in, he just went over the top. Fantastic shot. And one hopes for this youngster did not have a good game in the first innings. He will be looking to make amends. You want to put every bad ball away, but then you'll have to play smart cricket in doing so. Went to lunch at 11, now on to 15. Stroking it nicely now for a single. In the first innings, looked a bit nervous, Sachin. Did not get the type of runs he was looking for in his debut for Demerara at this level. Got a little bit burly as well since youth cricket, so you may want to work on that. And that will help with his technique and his time at the crease. But Sinclair with his off breaks. And he has been very effective with the ball, not huge wicket hauls. But over the years, he has come in handy with a two wickets here, a three wickets there, a very handy fella to get in any um, cricket team has done well for Guyana so far with both bat and ball and continues in inter-county cricket. Uh, Sachin Singh, he has been around for a long time despite uh, of his youthful age. Yeah, I remember Sachin playing the local franchise cricket at that time. And got up 99 in one of the earlier matches when he felt, yes, this is the beginning of something great, but just did not kick on. I saw Shepard moments ago with an Anthony Bramble shirt on. Just wondering if there were two Brambles out there. <laughs> Over completed the first after lunch. The Demra are in their second inning, starting 23 for one, now 28 without further loss. And for Sachin Singh's career, John, he's a youngster, like you rightly said, in the franchise cricket. Cricket showed a lot of confidence, looks good. The thing is, now you've gotten your opportunity, you want to make it count for you. And what better stage? Your most senior cricket in your country, and it's four-day cricket. Um, spend some time at the crease there, play sensible cricket. Um, you don't want to see him looking to hustle the bowlers. You play every ball on its merit. The pitch continues to be a good one, a good cricket pitch. The outfield is very, very um, fast here. It is left on him now to ensure that he spends time at the crease. The more time you spend out in the middle with his talent, it simply means the more you're going to trouble the scorers. Myself and Matthew Kishin were speaking about putting pressure on the bowlers as a batsman with Nandu batting himself into a hole. But if you can rotate the strike some more, ask the bowler to bowl to a different plan every ball, that is putting pressure on bowlers and it's something that Sachin can work on as well. Yes, you guys were spot on. I did listen to that. And this has plagued many young West Indian batsmen over the years. You look at the number of dot balls that bowlers sent down, you know, it's very, very alarming. And this tells you that it's important that the skills level of our cricketers 
where to score your singles and your twos, where the scoring opportunities are, you must be able to know that and do it as well. Smith with his second spell. First, oh, this one has edged away past the feelers in the slip region and into the boundary for four. Shot in the dark for Sachin Singh. Yes, Johnny, he was playing away from the body there, opening up himself at the crease. That was a delivery that was well pitched up, and he was looking for the drive. And the bat was actually angled in his hand. It took the outer edge and sliced away. Has to be careful. He was at the wicket when he saw the demise of Matthew Nandu. The previous delivery before Nandu was out, he just gave himself a lot of room, cut at one that was moving away from him, was lucky to survive. The very next delivery didn't learn anything, played almost the same shot, and this time the catch was taken. Has to be careful. Smith opening burst with a new ball, three overs, one maiden, none for two. He'll be very pleased with that ball flying through the slip court, and this time Singh opens the face of the bat and will get it down towards a short third man. But Smith won't mind at all. Getting him to bowl to his field and such a thing, nibbling outside his off stump, could very well get the ball to go to hand. Yes, and this is good to see from Niall Smith. He had a very good um, start to his career against the Leeward Islands almost four years ago, three, four years ago. Did well. But since then, he tends to spray too short and wide outside the line of the off stump, and on many occasions, did not put any trouble whatsoever to the batters. The thing is, you're opening fast bowler, you must make the batsman play. So it tells about his control. If he can control it more often, he's going to be a handful. Out of five wicket hall in the opening round in this year's regional four-day tournament. Pick for his bowling. But with the likes of Kimo Paul available for Esukebo, we'll see how he goes and if he can work his way back into the national side. Leading bowler last season for the Guyana Harp Eagles. Shepard is back as well. So whether they're going to be using Shepard and Kimo Paul. The likes of Ronford Beaton with a five-wicket haul as well. Shamar Joseph a five-wicket haul. Good to see the fast bowlers really putting their hands up, taking opportunities. Ramner Savan and his men will have some work to do. <laughs> yes, uh, no jealousy there at all. And this is good for the cricket when there is opposition. And the only way you can really remind the selectors. Bowled him. That was pitched bang on target and hardly moved. And a big drive by Imlac. He missed everything. That was an excellent delivery right on target. As you watch the replay, you'll see um, Niall Smith, great control. Well, that one came back from outside the line of the off stump, just a shade and beat Tevin Imlac, all ends up. That's an excellent um, ball from uh, Niall Smith. And we were saying, once he can get it right, he's going to be a real handful. To the right arm, Seema coming from the northern end of the ground. A little bit of wind behind him. That ball moved in the air, and a little bit more of the pitch after pitching. Look at that. Hitting the off stump clean out of the ground. And we know Imlac with a good defensive technique. He was genuinely beaten for pace as well. Very good wicket to get after lunch for Barbies. And Demrar now still trailing by 15 runs. 33 for the loss of two with Imlac bold for just three. Yes, and that's a fine wicket to get because this man, Imlac, was the one that held the Demerara innings together in the first innings when he made that 62. So he says here now that Skipper Leon Johnson and the rest, that will follow. They have to put something on the board to really challenge Barbies because they're still yet to wipe off that deficit. Some pressure now for Demerara because Akshay Prasad, under some pressure himself as a player with lots of potential, lots of opportunities, will need to get production now. Taking guard, Sachin Singh still searching for his feet really as well. Leon Johnson under some pressure as well. So if they can really 
remove another batter too quickly, this game may very well be over today. <laughs> you never know. All that's a possibility, and especially with Smith on target. I remember a few years ago at the stadium, John, you were here. We did commentaries. Uh, Niall Smith bowling to Darren Bravo of Trinidad and Tobago. That's on the northern end, created a havoc. And I remember that ball touched down beautifully, came back into the left-handed Bravo and picked the bales off. So he continues to bowl well. And once he doesn't get carried away on this pitch, you'll want to run in and ensure you get control first, and then you can develop pace. So Demerara will need a partnership. Ideal time for Sachin Singh and Akshay Pasad to really put their heads down. Smith getting some deliveries to really nip off. Good away movement as well to the left-handers. So they need to be very careful. And Pramal putting some pressure now on the new batsman. Three slips on the gully. This is what makes you as a cricketer. When you can come here weather the storm and that is ahead of you. Yes, I, I do agree with you. Now, the character of Akshaya Pasad is going to be seriously tested here by Niall Smith. Like you said, John, he's going through a bad spot. He's a national player. The thing is, can he overcome? Like I said, potential, talent, there. But need to get runs. There we see Bramble name written on the back. But it's Shepard who's wearing that shirt. It's Wakshai Prasad now very stylish when he gets going. Can be a gem to watch, but needs a start. Came in as a concussion substitute in the last game for the Harpy Eagles for his fellow Everest player. Santa Paul Hemraj, who was hit on the head by Martin, Darius Martin, with a very nasty bouncer. So got an opportunity, but was a bit nervous. That was very close to the leg stump as well. Yes, he has to be very careful here because generally he's bowling straight Niall Smith. Uh, that's the end of a very successful over for the Borbishan. Demarara in the second innings, 33 for the loss of two. Look at that delivery again. The short of a good length, moving in the air and then continue to move in after pitching. The perfect in swinging ball to the right hand, though. One of the best deliveries of the, of the day, of the match. Yes, and as a fast bowler, you know, it's going to give you a lot of confidence. Watching here from the commentary box, I enjoyed that delivery, and you called it correctly, John. One that actually wobbled in the air, the inward movement. And upon touching, kept going back into the line of the off stump. That was beautifully bold. And on a day, um, there's just a little bit wind, not too strong wind to get it to wobble. Congratulations to him. Sinclair to continue. On the leg side, swept away. So runs for Sachin and for Demerara. Anderson after that, Hundra just ambling to get that ball. Leg by signaled by the umpire. But Sinclair will want to land in good areas because there is Junior Sinclair, his cousin, who can also come in and bowl some off breaks. So you really want to get his rhythm going, Kevin Sinclair. Down the leg side once again, beats the wicket keeper as well. And he's going to run very close to the boundary this time. Anderson again is after it. This time he will just come second by his signal now by the umpire. It's a bad line from Sinclair. Yes, and good shot too by Sachin Singh. Ensure that he comes out, reach the spinner, and plays the sweep shot very well. That's a top scoring shot against spinners. But just do not get the connections with Baez, signaled by umpire. But Bramble as well, very upset with the line being used by Sinclair, and just telling him just to be tight outside the off stump. Well, I guess he's going to correct that, and he's going to correct it quickly. Um, uh, he's a very good talent. And correct it, he did, John. That was an excellent delivery. He's not a big spinner of the ball. Um, he's not one of them who's going to loop it more often than not. Um, he bowled with quite reasonable pace. But he's there and there about. 
and can break partnership too, like we have seen over his career. This is much better bowling. He's bowling around the wicket, and he's getting the line right. And with a little bit of spin, having Sachin Singh just guessing. He has a very good arm ball as well, Kevin Sinclair. So Singh will have to be very careful. Need to be very much mindful where his off stump is. That quicker one that comes through the arm can, can get him out. It's the end of an ov over that Sinclair may want to forget about. Two balls went down the leg side. So the end of 18 overs in the Demerara second innings, 39 for loss of two, still trailing my nine runs. Yes, uh, and Sachin Singh, he, he looks good, 22. There were a few anxious uh, moments, and uh, um, Passad has come out. He's yet to score after facing two deliveries, uh, with Nandu going for three, so too, Tevin Imlak. It is left on these two now to ensure, you know, they put together a partnership to see Demerara of the danger point of losing outright to Burbis. That's still on the card. They will have to make all the play. Burbis, over the years, they have done pretty well in inter-county cricket against Demerara. Some great battles, and it continues here today. So Niall Smith, we get in his last over. We'll continue. Prasad gets off the mark. Just a single. But you'll take that any day. Ball on the line of his leg stump. And any left-hander will be ha happy with those types of deliveries. But I think you don't see any emotions at all on, on Niall Smith's face. So you don't know if he's happy, if he's thinking something. But he's a hard worker. When in rhythm, very good. Yes, and it's good to see him bowling this way. From the time we saw him um, up in Burbies, we realized here is a youngster that is going to make it. And he's beginning to come through. West Indies a player as well. But since then, just fall apart a little. That's another good delivery right on target. So you want to see him make the batters play. The surprise delivery should be the delivery that is short and heading towards the body. Mind you, he has some excellent bumpers as well. Attacks the body. So you can see him here. He's just curtailing um, his quest for pace and just ensure that he gathers control. This is excellent stuff. And so far, one for eight. This is in his fifth over. Very impressive. Maybe you can see that he was destined to play cricket because his dad one of the more successful coaches for Guyana over the years, now a selector, Albert Smith, now also the manager for the Guyana Harpy Eagles side. So no doubt, with all of that cricket in, pedigree in, in his dad, cricket not surprising his professional, Niall Smith. Yes, and you're right about that, Chief from the block. You know, the same block. And he's coming through the ranks. Like you said, cricket runs in the blood. And uh, he definitely, on his day, can trouble the batters. And I'm happy for him. Last season, John, we were in Trinidad and Tobago. When he's unsound, you know, he presents a, a world of worries to every batter that he bowled against. And when he was erratic, he was really erratic, sprayed it all over the place. I'm just hoping that this is a, you know, a new Niall Smith. He started the season well. You were there in Grenada when he picked up that five wicket haul. He can only continues now. And with other people picking up wickets, he wants to maintain his place. And the best thing to do is to be effective. Oh, beauty of a delivery. Half-hearted appeals asking basically, how did that miss the outside edge? Look at that in the jit. Yes, John, look at it. I won't be able to say how it missed it. It missed it, though. And the left-handers will be very, very mindful here because to the right-handers, he's getting the ball to wobble and come back from outside the off stump. So to the left-handers, once he pitches right like he did in the previous delivery, he's going to move it away. And Sachin saying he was in no man's land, comprehensively beaten, too good to get the edge. 
So Akshaya have a word with his, with his partner, no doubt saying he's moving it outside the off stump, just trying to get, a, get across or allow it to go by. This time he gets back onto ball, dot ball to end the over. Smith, one for eight from six. Demerara, 40 for the loss of two in their second. Yeah, so 40 for the loss of two and the off spinner. Kevin Sinclair continues. And in this over, he has been very economical, right on target, with both players deciding to stretch out to the off spinner. When you look at great international batsmen playing spin, they tend to either play it deep in the crease or come out to reach the spin of the delivery. Many will come out to reach and play the sweep shot once it's in the slot. Loud shout there for leg before. That was pretty close. But he was stretching forward and now he's giving it, giving out leg before. Well, 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 the dreaded finger came while the umpire was placed on terrific pressure by the fielding team. Belatedly came the leg before decision and he has to go. We shall look at the replay. Ah, that one looked pretty close. Look at the umpire here, studying it, studying it, and now we decide to give him out. John, it looks spot on. Umpire Wazir Danraj had a fourth and fifth look maybe at it, mentally replaying it because he had just one opportunity to see it. Um, for me, I initially thought it was hitting him outside the line of his stump, but on the second look at it, I get the impression it was going to go on to hit maybe the off stump. Yes, and we can only say we concur with the umpire. It was pitched in line, and it was going to hit the off stump. And Akshaya Passad, his little misery in his career as a cricketer continues. He's gone for one, LBW. It's 40 now for the loss of three. And this should spell a lot of worries for Demerara. Pretty much negative eight, Demerara, for loss of three wickets. And I did say that some anxious moments ahead of them are because Akshay Prasad, short of runs, low in confidence, Sachin Singh now looking for um, stability, and Leon Johnson as well, um, scratchy in his first innings. So once he can pick up two quick wickets, Demrar can be in a lot of trouble. So said, so done. Sinclair, nagging away, nice line of length. Two left-handers at the crease. So he had no issues really in making the adjustment as if they were right hand and left hand combination. So he was bowling that consistent line just on the off stump. 
for Saad Abdul to play without his bat, given out like before. Yes, now he's a goner. It is left now on Leon Johnson and Sachin Singh to shoulder that responsibility. Um, do they have what it takes? Yes, they do. As you watch the replay again, pitched in line, would have definitely gone on to hit the off stump. And then he's coming wrong the wicket as well. Yes. If he was bowling over the wicket, would have got the impression the ball was going to maybe go by outside the off stump, but coming wrong the wicket, closing up the angle, and good umpiring, like we said, from umpire Dan Raj. So it's no over. Smith continues. New batsman, Leon Johnson, the captain, will now be on strike. And uh, once again, I, in the circumstances of what's happening out in the middle, that's another good delivery by Niall Smith, just short of a good length, rising into the body of the batter. And I'm sure his surprise delivery will be the one pitched in line with the off stump, moving away from the left hander. You do not want that to be every single delivery. You want to ensure you give the batter something to think about. So he's mixing them up very nicely, especially with Leon Johnson just coming to the crease. One of the more elegant players in Guyana, Leon Johnson. I'd love to see him get a big one here for Demerara and for himself. He needs it. Of course he needs it. And what better time, Guyana? Um, they're leading the run standing in the regional four-day championship, right? The points standing. And Guyana is doing that without Johnson really significantly, you know, scoring runs. So he'll need a big uh, one out in the middle. I think Guyana will be going to Trinidad and Tobago to play their next round. So he wants to ensure he spent time out in the middle. And what, while all rounds are very important, he will want to ensure that Guyana keep themselves above in that point stable. So the skipper awaits the fast bowler. Good judgment. Always nice to see Leon Johnson batting and batting well. Knows where his off stump is, so he can play some very good shots all around the wicket. Love to see him hooking and pulling as well. He's really good, good player. Just recently not getting runs. Getting up in age as well. In the jeet? Yes, that is for sure. And that is something that you just cannot erase and get back to the teens. He's a very elegant player when he gets going, has done a terrific job in skippering the Harpy Eagles and the Guyana 4D squad over the years. This one a little bit wide outside the line of the off stump and moving further away. No pressure on Leon Johnson. So while you might have all the talent, the important thing is to, how do you turn that around into runs? You know, it is left, I, I always say this, and uh, I'll say it again, success depends on so many different things in this life. Most of all, it depends on you as the individual. You must take responsibility for that. I'm just wondering to know it might very well be a lack of concentration by Leon Johnson over the last couple of years. Smith changing his line of attack. He's opting to go wrong the wicket now to the left-hander Johnson. Not look at that, John. Despite going wrong the wicket, he's still getting the away movement from the left-hander. So it simply shows that uh, he has some skills in moving the ball in and away. And this is good. He's thinking too, coming wrong the wicket. Good delivery coming wrong the wicket for a stop. Then as a batsman, when a bowler changes his line of attack, you must be thinking, what is he seeing? And Johnson there, exposing his off stump, but like I said, he knows where his off stump is. He allowed that ball to go through. Not being tempted to play any shot at all, Johnson. So there's a good battle in the middle. Just wondering to know if he's looking to get one straight in line without any movement. Johnson allows it to go by. So testing over from Niall Smith coming to an end. Demerara 4 to 1 for 3. Captain Johnson's yet to get off the mark. Sachin Singh, the opener, still there. 
Yes, and you look at that there as far as the overs are concerned. Um, Shepard in that fourth column is yet to put a wicket on his name. Um, that fourth column has Niall Smith one for nine. There's also one for seven for Joseph and Sinclair picking up one for five. So the Burbishans has been a, a very, very good in the field today, both their fielding and in the bowling department as well. That's the reason why Demerara, they have found themselves in this position, struggling out in the middle. Their lovely scenery um, in the background just disappeared from us. And we're back with Pastor Kisun. Hello to you, Pastor. Are you going to bring some luck for your Demerara team? Well, I don't believe in luck. It has to be fortune, good fortune for them. Hi, Indar. It's good to be back after lunch. Had a little lunch there that wasn't that bad. And good to see you after a while as well. Yes, good to be back. It's cricket. Uh, so we can have a good season of cricket, good long season of cricket. Off the inside edge, along the ground, down towards backward square, the backward square. And Sachin Singh has to be careful here. That wasn't where he intended to play the shot, but he was committed to it. He went through with it, and he got runs through the onside field, through mid-wicket. Has to be very careful with the off-spinner pitching down and turning away from him, looking to whip that one away through the onside field. If I was a Demerara support, I would be worried that they've lost three wickets and they haven't erased the deficit as yet. Yes, but this presents an opportunity too for these two who are out in the middle. Very good delivery once again. Got himself in a tangle there, stretched long forward, and then looking to kill the spin. The ball took the inner portion of the bat onto pad and then rolled away into the offside field. So Kevin Sinclair is on song at the moment. Sometimes Johnson is very tentative to the spin, even though he can play it well. He's got to use his feet a bit more at times. Sometimes you get the impression a little bit lazy in, in, in playing the spinners and the way he uses his feet. Well, it has to be the way that he has judged the ball, has to judge the length, had to, has to look at the ball, you know, where it's going to pitch, um, is it going to be an off spinner? And in those little moments, you can play down the wrong line or play against the spin. Looks much more comfortable here as he's pushing out of this one, covering it, smothers the spin. The over's been completed, one for six from Kevin Sinclair. Demerara in the second innings, they're 42 for the loss of three. A terrible start by Demerara, looking at the run scored by the, the three who've been dismissed. Nandu, three. Imlak, three. Akshay Prasad, one. And, and there's a clouds above there, um, Matthew Kisun, and you look that's towards the northeastern part of the ground. They aren't looking good, not immediately threatening, but I think the weather today would have just gone against uh, what the Met Office would have um, predicted for Monday, and this is good to see. But looking out there, there's still some cottonwood-like clouds, but then in the distance, you're having some little gray ones building up. For heaven's sake, for cricket's sake, I hope it doesn't fall. But you, in, in your time, you, you would have seen a lot of inter-county cricket, didn't you? Oh, yes. Um and in the county cricket has always been of good standard, high quality standard. You get the best players from the country playing in the county cricket. So after a nine year absence and having it back now, it's really good, you know. Yes, absolutely so. I, I, I have enjoyed you guys at home there, a little bit under the weather. I just ensured that the big screen entertained me for the, for the while that I was there. Absolutely splendid. Congratulations to all involved. And here we speak about the government of Guyana, especially through the Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture and the Guyana Cricket Board to ensure that inter-county cricket is back, it's alive, and it has been good so far in the middle. It's something like, like it should have been like the standard of case cup cricket in yesteryear. 
which we would not have known much about, 50s, 60s, thereabout, uh, when you would have the crowds visiting those grounds, DCC and multi Nose and GCC and Everest. Well, even in police as well. Yes, yeah, so true. even in the 90s, in, in the 80s, early 2000s, we still had inter-county cricket, and uh, that's a lovely looking shot. Great timing, and he picked the gap to perfection, run pretty close towards the boundary. So that was a good shot on the back foot and steering it and getting runs in the process as well. Sachin Singh, gone on to 26. I remember going to places like Enmore and Albion. Those venues were packed. We went to uh, inter-county matches at Hampton Court in Essequibo. Top class cricket broadcasted live on radio. So people glued to their radios and the spectator viewership was excellent as well. This is a great restart, you know, and it's good to see that you're starting all over again. You aren't starting from scratch. You're starting with experience. I think Sachin Singh is looking a little better here now. Rode his luck early on. He was dropped, I think, by Anderson's second slip early in his innings when I think he only had about one or two. Sinclair, beg your pardon. And he's gone on to 26 now. Just got nine in the first innings. So... Uh, he's probably saying to himself, I've got to show grit and determination here. I've got to buckle down and get a, a good score for my team because uh, I've seen three men gone cheaply. Yes, and he has done the hard work. He has gotten on to 26. You want to ensure now that you convert this 26 into a half century. It is left now to see how he capitalizes on this good start. Beautifully bowled by Niall Smith. Look at that delivery. Touched down and took off. And that would have surprised many, many other batsmen. Leon Johnson, with all his experience, just managed, well, gave us the feeling that he was pulling the bat inside the line. Another excellent delivery coming wrong the wicket by Niall Smith. Halfway and about to play the delivery and then pull the bat inside the line. Yes, yes. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt there. But Niall Smith is bowling better, much better. Yes, I like what I'm seeing here. Control is of vital importance. Notice he's bowling with some pace as well. Mixing his deliveries up in terms of his, his pace. And this says that he's thinking the game through. 45 for the loss of three. Seven overs, one for 11 for Niall Smith. You've just got seven wickets in the bank and you haven't given Barbies a run to chase as yet. Still three behind, so it's left up to these two. They need a good partnership here. I was saying earlier uh, with John and um, Mikluanya that Demara will be very hard pressed to get up to anything over 275, 300 runs. That, that's a tall order for them. And the fact that they've lost three at the top already, very cheaply, a lot of pressure will be put on the likes of a Barnwell and the others to come. Johnson's got to get some runs here in this second innings. Well, look at that. That was wide outside the line of the off stump and Johnson, Sachin Singh rather, Cut at the delivery, took the under edge, it went past the keeper, uh, between the keeper and first slip. And was another false shot. He was cutting with the body way away from the delivery there. And if they're going to get up to that 275, you're talking about Matthew. It's important that Leon Johnson stays there, and he is the one that can make them get up to that. They are far away from that, however. It is left to be seen how Johnson, you know, um, uh, play in the second innings. Beaten outside the line of the half stump, too good to take an edge there. Once again, well bowled by Kevin Sinclair. Touched down and spun away outside the line of the half stump. Uh, and he knows it was a beauty, too good to get a wicket. He doesn't rip the spinners too hard, Kevin Sinclair. 
But there are times when we see that he can exert some amount of good spin to spin away, leaving the left handed strandled out in the middle. I think all Sachin can do here for himself and his team is to get a good innings here on this belt. He's done, done a bit of the hard work already, 26. Stay there, concentrate, but show that you've got technique. And you're right about that, Matthew. You, you might not be a superstar, but you get your opportunity. He's getting a start here. He wants to ensure he makes it count. Now, that was nicely played. Tucked away off the legs, and it's going to run pretty close towards the boundary. Touches the rope now, despite a sliding effort by the fielder down on the boundary. Can't prevent it. Nicely played. Good timing. And he chose the right delivery to, to tuck down the leg side. Yeah, the line was a little bit bad there by Sinclair, but well played. Well played by uh, Sachin Singh to get himself up to 13. Now he overcomes the end. 24 gone. 49 for the loss of three. So Borbis will have to bat again. One run on. And seven wickets standing. It is left to be seen now how much can they, how many these seven wickets can put together so that Demarara can make a fight against Burbis. But to make a good game of it, they've got to give them over 225. I think 225 up would be a, a good game. A good game. You look at Demarara bowling, it's weak. It's a bit more weak as compared to Barbisa's bowling, of course. Um, they, their bowlers are pretty good. Good combination of fast bowlers and the spinners. Good experience as well. Quick delivery from Smith. Squared up Johnson. He had to open the face and guided it away into the offside. Do, do, do you think, Matthew, it's a kind of weakness by Demarara bowling? Because when you look at the Barbician batting, the innings played by Kevlon Anderson, a splendid 100, top class 100, he batted brilliantly, and then um, the other Sinclair, Jason Sinclair, he batted brilliantly as well. Other than that, there weren't too many other big scores. So what we, you know, you look at the technicality of the situation, the Sin Jason Sinclair. Junior, yes. Yeah. And uh, the other uh, batter that, uh, Kevlon Anderson, they took that game away from Demarara in the first innings. They did, they did. And, and, and what we're saying, the Demarara fast bowlers were not that penetrative. Uh, with the exception of Barnwell, who used his craftiness and his skill and his experience to pick up four wickets. Uh, the others didn't quite. You look, for example, um, Ronaldo Ali Mohammed. That was a wicket gifted. That was a gifted wicket because I think the batter there just pushed the ball uh, into the hands of the field at cover, I make it. I think that was Karim. Um, when he got this first wicket. But not much pace from them. They're just medium fast bowlers. So not penetrative enough. But in the Barbies camp, their bowlers are much more uh, quality, penetrative, good line, good lengths. Shepard is an international cricketer. Niall Smith playing for Guyana. Uh, you look at them, you look at Pamal, uh, the veteran, uh, and Kevin Sinclair, who is an upcoming young star, as, I, as far as I'm concerned, as long as he remains consistent. Uh, he's played for the West Indies already. So you look at their bowling and compare it to them, are difficult to match the two sets of bowlers for the two sides. And when you look at it too, Matthew, the point taken... Among the Barbician fast bowlers, there is competition to get into the Guyana national team. And competition can bring out the worst in you, it can bring out the best in you. And I think what it has done is to bring out the best in the Burbies. Because there is competition here. Um, I think that Romario Shepard will be going with the West Indies one day, a squad to South Africa. So this opens the door. You know, Niall Smith, I think, is going to keep his place there in the team. So, too, Shamar Joseph, uh, the youngster from Barakara in Burbese. Good to see him making a success so far. So, this is what keen competition can do. 
Nicely flicked away through the onside field. But there's protection down on the deep backward square long leg boundary. That's the 50 up for Demarari in the second innings. They're 50 for the loss of three, two runs on. Johnson gets off the mark with that shot. He's a good leg side player as well. Can play the ball nicely through cover, extra cover as well. But his leg side strength is very good. And you're talking about Demarar players and the quality of the players in the Demarar area now. Um, you look at first division, second division cricket in, in the Georgetown area, not up to par. There's a, there's a T20 second division tournament on right now that I'm umpiring in, in Georgetown. The competition not too bad, but you look at some of the teams that make up Georgetown cricket, they don't have grounds. Some of them, they don't have grounds to play on, to practice on, and so on. And, and that will happen in cricket, but it's, it's a long ask. It's a big ask for a number of these cricketers in the Georgetown area to really develop their cricket uh, with the facilities needed and having maybe coaches to help them along the way. Very difficult, but 25 overs gone, 50 for the loss of three. There's room for improvement, and that's, that's the key. Mikuwanya Yezarel has rejoined me in the Jeter's left. Miku, good afternoon. Place looking a little bit dark now with the clouds getting ready to come over the Providence Stadium area. Still a lot of blue to, to on the western part of the ground. That's over on the West Bank, West Coast area. So the clouds are coming across. We'll have to wait and see what will transpire with the weather here. In the meantime, it's good cricket. An enthralling battle, good contest. Barbies have got them Arara on the squeeze here, 50 for three. Just two runs on with seven wickets in hand. Good afternoon to you, Miku. Good afternoon, Matthew, and good afternoon to our viewers. Yes, it is becoming a bit cloudy here today, not only in the environment, but also for the Demarara team, who are precarious. For three, just a lead of two at the moment. They would want to add a whole lot more for that because there's still a lot of cricket left to play in this contest. We have to do remain in a session for today and also tomorrow, the final day, day four. Skipper Leon Johnson looking to guide the ship at this time. Let's assess the game at this stage. They need to bat this session out, the final session, and they need to bat in the morning as well. I would think the first session to save the game, more or less, but at the same time, runs have got to be scored. Yes, definitely. At least uh, up to the, the first session, or at least most of the first session in the morning. And maybe looking to score it, maybe uh, at least 70 runs per session or something like that, because... Uh, with any total, I think if you give the Barbies team two sessions to get just around 100 or so, they'll probably go for it. 150, probably going to go for it because the batters seem very confident and we know that they have the technique. Uh, it's 26 overs gone here at Providence. It's 50 for three. Demerara batting for the second time. With the hard hitting batters that Barbies have got, in their artillery. You can't give them 150 at all. You, you've got to give them anything over 200 plus to get in two sessions. And even that uh, can become very easy for Barbies when you look at the likes of Shepard and Bramble, who hit the ball very hard. And let's not forget Fu, Jonathan Fu. Correct. You know that the Sinclair uh, brothers, uh, Junior Sinclair, uh, yeah, forgive me, not brothers, but share the same last name. That they can also turn it up when it is needed. So Demerara are in a bit of a tight spot here. They need to bat time and also score runs. Sachin Singh currently on 30. 
doesn't look fully settled in the crease. I'm getting a bit of an uneasy feeling. Look at though he's still scratching around a bit to find his place. But we hope that in time, as his innings progresses, he'll settle in and maybe look firstly to get that half century and maybe something bigger. Yeah, I think his nerves have, has eased a bit, for sure. It's not that nervous like he was in, in, the, in the top part of his innings, but he's played some nice shots along the way. To get himself up to 30, he would say is uh, not bad, but start all over again. Get another 30 now. That's how you should do it. When you get to 30, tell yourself, well, erase that, that becomes zero. I'm looking for 30 now. And with 30 more, he gets a half century and takes his score to 60. That's how you've got to do it. That should be the way you're, you're thinking through your game. Look at that. Flashing shot. Between what? Third slip and, and backward point? Down to the boundary for four. But you, you reach for that. Let's have a look at the replay. Reach for that. No movement of the feet. I, I, I don't think the Barbicians are going to mind this at all. I think this is how they are going to want him to play. Continue to flash and take such risks. You know, every time he does that, it uh, just increases the chance of getting that wicket. So they want to see him doing more of that. And it's Joseph who's back, who's bowled at him outside the off stump, looking for that uh, flashing shot, shot out of control, and would take the edge and, and go to, to one of the slips feelers this time. The line a, a little bit wrong. Wasn't looking for that line outside the leg stump. Worked it around the corner. Joseph just trying to come with a straighter one after going a bit wide outside the off stump, but just a bit too straight. See, so he probably would want to keep a, a similar uh, line of attack for Leon Johnson here. I would say that even though Joseph picked up a five-wicket haul against Barbados in, in only his second um, regional game, first-class match, um, he's got a lot of work to put in with his cricket too. You know, his bowling skills, he's got to become more smarter, develop himself nicely, uh, continue to work with his fitness, and get those line line and lengths right. He hasn't looked bad at all. He's not express pace, but he's someone to work with for the future. Yeah, definitely, Matthew. And, uh, you know, that's one of the purposes of having such tournaments. This is where you develop. This is where you learn so much about your game. You know, being in a team... Uh, such as the Barbies team share a locker room with experienced guys such as Primal and even the leadership of the Barbies setup will only do him good and we can uh, it's been a testimony to see the results coming from the county they have been doing well so he would be in good hands but he has also got to put in the work nice bumper Dion Johnson would have had to deal with Hundreds upon hundreds of bumpers in his career. And he handled it well. He overcomes the then 27 gone, 55 for the loss of three. Seven runs on now, Demerara. So one can safely say seven for three. Demerara in their second innings. In terms of runs to be gotten by Borbis. The dark clouds continue to come across Providence slowly. We'll have to keep an eye on that. I think... Demerara would smile a bit at that if there's a bit of rain because it, it delays the game. It delays the game a bit, so you've got less time. And uh, it puts Barbies in a situation where they won't have enough time to go after the runs if nothing dramatic takes place in terms of get, getting rid of the Barbies' battles. But we are at Providence fastest drying ground in the region so unless it's a 
a shower of all showers. I don't think it'll have that much effect. Oh, not a nice delivery there. But I, I don't think it's, it's, it's a good idea. Let's have a look at the replay. Whoa. Straight to delivery. Outside the line of the awesome. Sachin may be expecting a bit of turn. Not to be had. Yeah, I don't think it's a good idea for uh, the Demerara team to get into that sort of mindset. You know, hoping for the rain because that would only lead to trouble. You know, as they say, fortune favors the brave. When you're flowing, you keep flowing. Once you want to get negative, it will creep in and affect you. you know, and I like that. I like that. I like that thought, Miku. But you know, part of cricket is the atmosphere of the cat and mouse situation. Whether with the weather or with players against each other out in the middle, you'll always have that. I was asking about uh, another Joseph from Barbies, Keon Joseph. I understand he, he was dropped. He was one of the young fast bowlers from Barbies that had a lot of pace. He has done good work for Guyana in the time he's played for Guyana. Had, has had his moments too, where he didn't quite perform, but dropped. I guess it's all about his fitness and form, availability. And then you look at, um, you look at uh, the, other, the other fast bowler, all rounder from Barbies as well. Kian has always been a player that I, that I like. You know, I, I was really rooting for him to really kick on. He had a, a very good couple of years um, at a local level here in Ghana and also at a regional level. And I think he would have done a couple of tours with the West Indies A team. Uh, he had a bit of an ankle injury, if memory serves me right. And I just think it has not been the same for him since. Um, it's sad that the young man didn't really kick on as much as we would have wanted to, but uh, he had a stint also with the Ghana Amazon Warriors. I don't think he was uh, featured in the games, but he was in, in the squad. So that was a really good time, maybe a few years ago, maybe 2012, 2013, if memory serves me right. 28 overs gone, 56 with a loss of three. We're keeping an eye on the weather here. As the dark clouds begin to loom uh, over Providence, mm -hmm. coming from the northeast, north northeast of the ground, which is always a danger area in terms of the weather. Dark conditions here now. Come on, Pastor. I'm sure you can give us a, a quote about dark times in your life and how it will pass. Joy comment in the morning, all right? Or at we we'll weep in May and June for the night, joy comment in the morning, yeah. So even if the clouds weep a bit, you know, it'll pass. You'll get cricket afterwards. Correct. And they've got, of course, the best covers here at the stadium. You talked about fastest drying ground, one of, one of the fastest, fastest drying grounds. But I've seen the rain pour here and a lot of water. The, 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 the outfield and sun was waterlogged. I've seen that, which was very surprising indeed. But when you talk weather conditions now worldwide, anything can happen. So much has been happening in terms of the environment. Worked on the leg side there. Just picking up the single. Is Sachin not getting that line quite right? Easy pickings there. If we can build a dome, cricket can be played right through. That would be a nice thing, huh? If we can get a dome in Guyana. Pasta. That's billions, right? Pasta billions this, of dollars. Yes. Oh, this rain it in a bit. I, I, I know we have oil, oil galore, but you know. Investment in a dome. Now I'm thinking one of, the, ooh, and I missed everything. The batsman, the stumps, the wicket keeper. 
Yeah, so, I mean, good to be optimistic, though, in your thinking, and you, you look ahead at cricket. A dome would be very good. The, the thing about cricket that makes it a bit hard, too, is that uh, you cannot play when the weather changes and you get rain. You just can't play the game. There are other sports you can play, even if it's raining or snowing or whatever, but not cricket at all. And that's why a dome would be nice to have at some point in time. Maybe we could learn about building, uh, building a stadium from the NFL guys, because they have probably some of the best in the world. Correct, in America. correct. Mm -hmm. and, but I, I think a dome would actually take away from some of the natural characteristics of cricket. But it's I mean, got to be... If, if you're in a dome, it's kind of like maybe you're kind of in a vacuum as well. It depends. It's yeah. got to be, uh, of course, high enough, up to standard and so on, and built in such a way where you can still get a lot of light coming in from, you know, the top part of the dome. So it's all technology in construction work. So the rains are here, and we'll have a break. The players will leave. The umpires have called on the covers. And at 11 and a half minutes after 1 o'clock on a Monday afternoon, it's a working day in Guyana. Demerara 61 for 3, Sachin Singh 37, Leon Johnson, the captain, one not out with 16 extras, 28.3 overs bold. Joseph is in his sixth over, 1 for 13. And here comes the rain, and the covers are on, and we'll have a break. But the lead so far is 13. 13 runs on by Demerara. So Borbis will have to bat again should we have cricket. Uh, should we have a restart. Demerara will want to continue building on their innings. And then maybe give Borbis a tantalizing total to chase in maybe a session and a half or two sessions. So we'll take a break with the rains here at Providence. Demerara in the second inning, 61 for the loss of three. Singh, 37. Leon Johnson, one not out. Uh, 37 uh, from 67 balls with six fours. And Johnson, one from 28 balls. All right, so we'll take a break. Stay with us. We'll be back when the rains have stopped and play is possible again.
Welcome back to Providence for the final time on day number three. Just about 10 minutes after one today, local time, the rains came, players and officials were off the field and they have not returned since. There was an inspection a few moments ago with the umpires deciding that it's not suitable enough to play despite the rain has stopped and they'll have a late, well, have an early start tomorrow morning on day number four. So that's going to be stumps on day number three. Them are in their second innings, six to one for the loss of three. Sachin Singh, the opening batter on 37. Leon Johnson, the captain, on one, enjoying a slim lead of just 13 runs. Heading into the fourth and final day tomorrow. Rain really playing spoil sport today on day number three. The day that most matches, four day matches, decided. Inajit alongside me, Inajit. A disappointing end to a day that had so much of promise to cricket. Yes, John, I do agree with you. It is disappointing. Um, this shows climate change is real. Despite the rain has stopped here, there is still some clouds in the distance, and there isn't anything that you can do about it. What we know so far in the scoreboard there will tell the story that Demarara is on the back foot. Let's say there is no more rain tomorrow morning when play scheduled to start at nine hours. I still feel that Burbies has a good chance in winning this game, 61 uh, for the loss of three. It all depends how Leon Johnson plays. He's experienced and he's the one that should stay out in the middle to guide the rest. I'm disappointed that the rain had to intervene because I was uh, enjoying the spell by Shamar Joseph uh, and prior to that as well, um, Smith, Niall Smith, bowled with a lot of pace and good movement too. So it was challenging out in the middle there, disappointing to see that the rain has come, but there isn't anything you can do as far as the weather is concerned. Right, so that is the situation on day number three, stumps on day number three being drawn because of rain. Not a lot of play possible today, but tomorrow the umpires are hoping to get a result tomorrow starting as early as nine o'clock in the morning and hoping to have a result and it can go as late as I think 5.30 tomorrow afternoon trying to get in as many as possible in the final day. So just a quick recap of the Demar second innings. Remember they had a deficit of 48 and they lost three wickets before wiping off that deficit and our little partnership of 21 developing between Captain Johnson and Sachin Singh. The three first class players all back in the hut, Matu Nandu three, Tevin Imlak, three, and Akshay Prasad, one. Wicket apiece to Niall Smith, Shamar Joseph, and Kevin Sinclair, the off spinner. Mm -hmm. And that really is a disappointing end to day number three. So tomorrow promises to be much better, hopefully. And if you look at the weather conditions that, that is forecast for tomorrow, we should be able to have a prompt start in the gym. But everything um, is pretty much in the hands of the Almighty, and it can change in a flash. Yes, definitely. Like I said, no control over that, so we shouldn't worry. We all want to see a good ending to this cricket match that has promised so much. And I think, John, just before I go, an official word from the Guyana Cricket Board is that the fourth round match that was scheduled at Enmore between Essequibo and the Select 11 will now be played starting on Wednesday, the 1st of March, going through to the 4th, and that will be streamed live as well. So that's good news that the stadium has been made available for that um, fourth round action between Essequibo and the Select 11. Yeah, good news indeed, and that is a good way to end coverage on day number three. So just to repeat what Indijit said, the other four strong match between Esquivo and the Select 11 that was scheduled for Enmore will not be played at Enmore because of the unfavorable conditions at Enmore and it has been shifted to the National Stadium which will now begin on Wednesday, the day after this game between Burbis and Demarara is scheduled to end. So everything being equal, it will be eight consecutive days of inter-county cricket and what a return to inter-county cricket we will have. So that will be our coverage today as well on behalf of Energit, Matthew Kisun, and Miku Wanya Israel. My name is John Ramsing. Thank you for your company on behalf of the technical team as well. Wishing you well for the rest of the evening and inviting you to join us tomorrow just about 8.55 when we bring you live action on day number four in this match, Demar against Barbies. Until tomorrow, bye-bye.